I'm not sure how to start these Dark Souls journals. Like, am I allowed to smile? Hey, you Welcome to entry zero in my Dark Souls journal, the third adventure on my channel and my third pledge this year. So this is just a before I go into the game series, my thoughts, my expectations, where my mind is at before I know anything about Dark Souls. So as a quick uh, recap, I did a, a, a channel update and as my next pledge is I'm pledging to play Dark Souls, specifically remastered. I'm gonna play that to the credits. As long as I can get to the credits, that is all I'm gonna try to do. I know very little about the whole Dark Souls universe. My experience goes back to, I did get a copy of Dark Souls on PlayStation 3. I played maybe an hour or two of it and I did not like it at all. So at that time, I had the same complaints as I did with Monster Hunter where I felt the movement was very clunky, the difficulty was hard, and it just did not feel satisfying. Somehow, I managed to actually like play the game enough to beat the Minotaur boss, which is like on a bridge, and that thing was hard. And I tried and tried and I always had to like go back from the camp back. I like I really hated that mechanic at the time. And when I finally beat the Minotaur, I walked through some doors to like find like and progress through this game. And a big dragon came out of nowhere and burnt me to a crisp. And I was like, that's cheap. That's cheap. I hate this. So I've never looked back on the game, but I've always been curious about Dark Souls because I've always been very much into like the medieval fantasy stuff. And um, I hear Dark Souls was also very inspired by the manga uh, Berserk, which I was also very much into. So I've always been like watching it from a distance, but I'm like, I don't think I like you. And I, I believe it was two years ago when Sekiro came out. I was like, all right, creators of Dark Souls, we got like samurai ninjas now. Okay, I can definitely get into this. And I picked up Sekiro and I put so much time into just trying to get through the first ogre in there killed the ogre and then you have to like kill like a samurai demon monster with like a bunch of other things couldn't get through that couldn't get through like I, I ended up in a cave with a headless monster which was terrifying and that destroyed me and I was like no I'm just done and then oh man so my my journey with Sekiro I couldn't even progress so I kind of said that I kind of closed the book on that I said I will never play these games I just I am not good enough and the only reason I am revisiting it now is, well, one, you have all voted on that was the game you wanted me to play. But two, because I went from hating Monster Hunter so much and I saw no appeal for that game to loving it and getting these adrenaline rushes and getting all of these like really cool experiences this year, I'm like, can I get that in Dark Souls? Can I get this Monster Hunter feeling in Dark Souls? And that's really the reason I'm revisiting this. And I'm already sensing very similar feelings. So when I got into, when I made my pledge for Monster Hunter, I remember I was like, what if I hate it? What if, like, I just committed to 30 to 50 hours of streaming this game. What if I hate it? And it just turned out after the first stream, I didn't hate it. So I'm going into Dark Souls right now where I'm like, I'm starting this game. What if I hate it? I committed to 30 hours of it. So I've, I've got that fear. And as I, I've just wrapped up Rise, Monster Hunter Rise, I've been thinking about um, the experiences I had in World, which I just can't have anymore because I understand, like the first time I met a Rathalos, I didn't even understand like what a Rathalos was. I was just like playing the game, trying to figure things out. And a Rathalos came from the sky and like was, I, I didn't even like hear it coming. I was like, what is that? And then like a big shadow showed up and it just jumped out of nowhere and ate like a poor dinosaur. And I was like freaked out. Those experiences, I can't really get so much out of Monster Hunter anymore because I know all the monsters. I also loved uh, putting out a Monster Hunter journal and people were like, oh, just wait till you get to the pickle. Wait till you get to Clifford. And oh, wait till you get to Toby. And like, there were all these names of monsters. And I was just like, what? What is waiting for me? What are these things? I have no context for them. And now to think back that there is so little mystery in Monster Hunter where I just know so much about it, it's hard to kind of get like a big surprise. Even uh, the newest Monster in Monster Hunter Rise, which I knew nothing about, doesn't do the same as like, what do you mean an electric squirrel? What is Toby, right? So Or, or a, base, a B-52 bomber. What are these things? So I'm going into Dark Souls with the same ignorance of I know nothing about the game. I don't even know the name of that Minotaur boss. I know that there's like, uh, people talk about a, a dark 
king or something or the forbidden or forgotten king or something and apparently like that's a big deal so i'm like ah yes jumping into the unknown difficulty give me the adrenaline rush like all of these i'm, I'm getting already very similar beats and rhythms to starting when i started with monster hunter so like you can only experience this so many times in your life i feel so i'm like now like hooked on it. i'm like okay where can i get my next fix so that's when it comes to gameplay that's one thing my one of my biggest fears and concerns though is when i did my monster hunter pledge i already had i also had a lot to it had a lot to do with the monster hunter community was very supportive and they all kind of showed up in the comments and were like this is how you play this is how you do it the Dark Souls community, not to shit on anyone here, but there is a reputation around the Dark Souls community that it is a little bit more toxic. And I'm like, well, what kind of community am I going to draw? Because I went through Monster Hunter, which is a fairly light positive game, despite you being a monster killing babies and parents and all sorts of monsters. Um, but the community comes together to support and help each other out for the most part. I didn't actually meet that many toxic people in the Monster Hunter journey. So now with Dark Souls, um, there are going to be some people who follow me over from Monster Hunter, but I expect a lot of new people are going to be joining in from the Dark Souls community that know nothing about all the other content I've done. And how are they going to view my noobishness to the series? Are they going to be like frustrated and annoyed and just like, who is this guy and why is he streaming such poor gameplay? Um, is it just going to be a lot of hate comment in the comments here on YouTube and on Twitch? Those things that I don't know, and you know, I really hope not. Um, that's why we have a good moderation team. They're hopefully going to keep that out of there, but it would kind of be a downer. Like the game is already a downer in terms of theme. It'd be a downer if the community shows up in a significant amount of number and it's all negative. Like that would just sour the experience. So I'm really hoping that I can discover like a nice little happy niche of Dark Souls. Happy and Dark Souls don't seem to go together, but hopefully some supportive people that can help me understand the game, help me appreciate it, um, just learn more about it. One of the great things I love about doing all these different journals and these adventures is the fact that there's so many people that are willing to help me understand and appreciate these themes or these series. Uh, the JoJo series is another fantastic um, example where I knew nothing about the series despite it being around as long as I've lived which is crazy and I'm learning about that series Jojo influencing so many things that I've come to love uh, aspects of gaming aspects of anime like a, a lot in gaming there's just so many influences that people are like yeah you know that thing you know did you know that was influenced by Jojo I was like oh my god I didn't know but I see it now like it all makes sense um so Dark Souls, I think, has a lot to offer. The fact that it has three games, it has the Demon, the, the, I don't know anything about that one, the, the PS5 remaster game, which is based on like an old remaster, Demon's Soul, I think. Sekiro, uh, Blood, Bloodborne, I think it's called. And now we've got Elden Ring. Like this is a massive universe, a massive community, and there is so little I know about it. So I'm really looking forward to learn everything I can about Dark Souls. I really hope I will enjoy it because if I can get through Dark Souls 1 and actually enjoy and appreciate the series, I've got so much more content to like dig into and just absorb. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what all of that's going to be about. Um, those That's where I'm setting out right now. I'm hoping that my skills in dodging and rolling are going to help me. They helped me in Monster Hunter. People said it will help me a lot more in Dark Souls. So we will see um, as we start in earnest with the next stream on Tuesday over at twitch.tv slash hjofficial every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I will see you in my next Dark Souls journal after I've had my first four hour stream. So I'll see you then. And until next time, keep it classy. I think Monster Hunter made me too strong. Dark Souls bosses are jumping off bridges when they see me coming. No. Welcome to a Dark Souls journey as I go through all of Dark Souls Remastered and record my journey and my progress in these journals. Who knows how many journals it's going to take, but I am so excited to get this started and to share my, ex my very first experience with all of you. So a quick recap, I dabbled in Dark Souls on the PlayStation 3 years ago. I've never gone into this franchise. I gave up after I got burnt to a crisp by a dragon uh, by the Taurus Demon. 
And it's only because of my Monster Hunter journey, I am now looking to get back and try Dark Souls again to see if my perspective has changed. The answer to that question is yes, it has changed. I had so much fun on my first stream. I was smiling the whole time. The game feels less clunky. It feels, okay, it feels faster. It feels brighter, weird, right? And it feels, I remember it used to feel really grindy when I would die and I would be at a bonfire. To go back to where I was felt like such a like an uphill battle to kill all the skeletons. Everything just felt comfortable now. I'm like, oh, I got to kill these 20 skeletons again. All right, let's do this. So let's take it from the start with the character creation screen, the very start of the game. I have to say, this is the moment where I was like, Classy is not joining us on this journey. I don't have a little sidekick to make. And that made me sad. But um, the, the character creation, easier than Monster Hunter, but my goodness, this really reminds you how old this game is because the options are not really great. And I went on to realize it doesn't matter how much time you put into your body or your face because you're gonna look like a dehydrated raisin half the time anyways. So who cares? I was very uh, disappointed that I couldn't put properly hey space j exclamation mark as my name. The exclamation mark was like an invalid character. The space was an invalid character. So in good old 1999 web language, I went with hey underscore j, the lamest version of my name. Then there were uh, classes. I completely forgot Dark Souls had different classes, which caught me off guard because I did not know what class to main. I went through everything. Everyone was telling me, be deprived, be deprived. I'm like, I'm already deprived of pleasure. Please, let me just have this. Um, but no, I was very scared to go in as a naked man. So I went in as the knight, which, you know, it's at the top of the list. So I'm like, maybe that means it's friendly. And a knight is usually pretty self-explanatory. Armor, shield, sword. Boom, boom, boom. Let's do that. So I did that. The items. I was not ready to select an item. So here I had a list of eight items. I had no idea what any of them meant. And the chat was not helpful because the chat was telling me to pretty much pick every item. Some people were saying, go for the key. Some people were saying, go for the pendant. Don't go for this. That ruins it. Only go for this if you're speed running. I honestly didn't know what to pick. None of these things called out to me, so I pulled out a randomizer that picked a number from 1 to 8, and we ended up with probably the most useless item ever. I got a pair of binoculars. So now I can see things from far away. But it's not even that far away. I can see in the game, and like I zoom in a little bit. It's the most useless item ever. I regret it. My luck ran out on that one. From there, um, we got the first cutscene. Again, I don't remember watching this cutscene when I played it on the PlayStation 3, so all of it felt fresh. I got a little bit of story, so bear with me. I think, if I understand this right, uh, there was a land that, and, and there were these, these four lords. Uh, we had the, the Zeus-like guys who was shooting lightnings. There were witches, there were like disease and famine people and there were the dragons, and then there was the traitor dragon. And everybody hated the dragons, so they all fought the dragons. And then all the dragons died, and we ushered in the Age of Flame. And now our story begins at the end of the Age of Flame, which is probably why we're lighting bonfires, and we have to go ring some bells. I don't know why we have to wake some bells. So we're in a land that is at the end of some era, and we're trying to do something. I'm not quite sure what the story is. If any of that sounded wrong, it's very possible because I don't understand what I'm, I don't understand the story yet, but it was very cool cutscenes. I suspect everything I saw in that cutscene I need to kill. So off we go. We're going to learn more and more about this as we go. So there's two bells to ring. There's one up top on a castle and there's one apparently um, in the land of decay or the land of zombies or something. So after that beautiful cutscene, I got tossed into the tutorial area, which is probably the only thing I really remember. I remember the tutorial area, and I remember the Taurus demon. I remember after the Taurus demon getting torched by a dragon, and that was the end of it. The tutorial area did such a fantastic job at teaching me things. I actually even forgot, or I never took the time to learn how to do the kick and how to do the jump thrust. So you do that by like hitting forward and the right shoulder button or the R2 button. Um, I can feel that those are a little bit more advanced moves. I have troubles pulling them off consistently, but knowing that I have those as options really helps me um, just have a little bit more options in terms of fighting. 
Uh, I've learned that I can pretty much run with my shield up with no consequence, which I love. It doesn't slow me down. And the fact that I can rarely ever see what's coming up makes me feel a lot safer that I can just have my shield up. And uh, of course, shield up doesn't protect you from trolley boulders. So the tutorial does a great job at teaching you the tone of the game, uh, the moves of the game, and that the game doesn't care about being fair. I went up some stairs at one point and a boulder came down at me. I'm just like, I, there was no way I could dodge. I'm just like, what is this? I'm not expecting a boulder to come down. I always expect the unexpected, I guess. Uh, finally, there was also like a little boss to test everything that you put together. And I love that the game introduces you above him. So it teaches you like, hey, you can like down thrust on its head and take a big chunk of health. So it took me two tries and I finally killed the, um, what's it called? I'm looking for the name here. The Asylum Demon. Um, I did not feel good about that fight. I was getting squished. Uh, rolling was a pain because I'm wearing like really heavy armor. So I'd like toss myself and just like clonk, clonk, clonk. And I'm just heavy rolls, I think, or fat rolls, people call them. Uh, the rolls didn't feel great. I don't know if I, I think I tried blocking. He came with like a big mallet. I'm just like block and he's like squish. Um, but through, through a little bit of running around and poke, poke, poke. Also, the slashing a boss does not feel like satisfying. It's not like Monster Hunter at all. It's like, am I even doing damage? What's happening here? Uh, so got through that and finally made it to the land of, I think it's Lord Daron. I could be wrong with that, but that's where the bells are. And now I get to explore this land and I spent maybe two to three hours, we'll say two, uh, exploring this thing. And when I, I thought I was making progress and by the end of the stream, I ended up right back to where I started I was like, ah, what, like, what was the point of all that? Now I recognize I did kill some mini bosses along the way, some bosses and unlock some shortcuts, but I did not think it was that kind of game. It made, it did remind me of Hollow Knight or any Metroidvania really, where you like, you're wandering like, what's over here? What's over here? What's over here? And then you end up in a familiar area and you realize you just like did a circle, but you unlock shortcuts so you can move around the whole map. And I'm just like, huh? So it's that kind of game. I like that. I like that. But I just, I don't know where to go next time because I thought I was progressing only to find myself back at the beginning. So from this point uh, where we get dropped on in Lordaeron, I think that's the name of it. I'll, I'm sure I'm pronouncing some names wrong or remembering them wrong. I always do. Uh, we got introduced to a friend. At least I was, I didn't realize it was a friend. Um, he started talking about humanity and how we're all losing humanity and that it sounds like it's a good thing to recover humanity. And I didn't understand what he meant, but it sounded like he said, you can steal people's humanities and I'm looking like a dehydrated raisin and he's looking like a fine young man. So I'm like, is the game telling me to steal his humanity? And so I thought about it and I was like, I don't even know what humanity does at this point. So I'm like, this sounds good. This sounds like a challenge. I'm not a noob player. So I hack and slash at him and then he attacks me and kills me in two hits. I was like, oh, that might've been a mistake. So I get revived at the camp and he's there and he's pissed and he keeps chasing me. I was like, oh, what have I done? I now have this thing that is overpowered that is chasing me. I'm screwed. I'm screwed. I unlocked this dumb mechanic where I can't get this like friendly NPC off of me. He's not so friendly anymore. So I doubled down. And I was like, all right, this is the first challenge. Let's go. And I started trying to fight it. And I was dying, but then I learned the magic of parry. Uh, so I learned that when you parry, you can actually like take out a lot of damage. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is all about parrying. And so after five or six parries, I finally killed him. I died a few times in the process, but I killed him. And then I learned that you can't take his humanity. Humanity is something else. And honestly, I still don't really know what humanity does at this point. So here I am with a dead NPC, the first one I met, and I got nothing out of it. He didn't even have items. He did teach me one thing though. I guess we should talk about it now. He might not have given me anything tangible, but he gave me the gift of parrying. And I've never been necessarily great for parrying but later on uh we came across these knights that looked really intimidating and i came across them from the back i was like i'm not touching that this guy looks tough and everyone's like go poke him go say hello and i was like no way troll or no way chat see chat troll same thing um but anyways i was like oh what the heck we're playing dark souls let's do it for the funsies so i go and i stab him in the back and then he comes at me and through sheer panic he's like Ruh! and i'm like oh parry and then I, I like take some health and then he's like, oh, like, oh, parry. Like I'm literally parrying out of panic, 
turns out I perfect parried him like five times in a row and I killed this optional like Dark Knight, which gives you, I think there's like a certain amount in the game. So I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? And the chat's like, oh, he's a parry God, he's a parry God. I'm like, yes, I'm a parry God. Let's go with that. Uh, and then later we came across another one. I was like, ah, oh, shit. Now they're going to know the truth that I'm not really good at parrying. So we go and we stab him in the back, the second one. And again, he's like, I'm like, oh no. And I parried him, of course, perfectly five times. And now I'm like, am I a parry god? Do I, am I actually good at parrying? So I tried to parry on the Taurus demon and it didn't work. I died. But speaking of the Taurus demon, uh, so he killed me a few times and then I learned that I could go up the tower and jump on him to take a good chunk of health And I'm like getting I'm getting ready to double time. I'm like, okay, what's he doing? And I'm like moving moving and then he's like stepping to the side stepping to the side and then he just jumps off the bridge and I was like, oh, come on. This was my first boss Like I was ready to to feel the adrenaline and all that and he just yeeted himself off the bridge What am I supposed to do? So I haven't really faced a proper boss in Dark Souls yet um, Because my first real boss there was the tutorial boss but this real boss just sacrificed himself so he didn't have to fight me um with that said i was able to progress and i knew this time about the dragon so i like tiptoed out the bridge and tiptoed back and of course he scorched the whole bridge with fire and then he's just sitting there and i don't know what to do because now there's a dragon guarding the tower we're gonna get that to that in a moment what i didn't realize the last time i did this was if you go the other way you meet a wonderful man called Oh man, what's his name? I think it's Solaire. I've seen him in all of the Dark Souls like marketing stuff. He's the famous Praise the Sun and he's hanging out there and there's the sun. And I was like, oh, this is a thing. What am I supposed to do? So I'm talking to him and he's just talking about stuff. And I was like, am I supposed to praise the sun? So I like pull out my emotes. I'm like, oh, where's the praise? I don't have a praise emote. I'm like, I've got the wave, wave the sun that did nothing. So then I did the only other emote I had, which was point the sun that did nothing either. Um, so I still don't know what, like the whole chat got excited when they saw him. I don't know why he's exciting or important. Um, so we're going to leave him with the sun for now. Uh, so from there we progress, try to explore things. I ran into some rats and I learned about the terrible mechanic that is poison in this game. Poison. This is the worst implementation of poison I have ever seen. It just does not go away. When your poison meter is filled, holy Jeez, does that hurt? It sticks around for like five, ten minutes. I've got no antidotes, and it takes my life. Like it take it takes my life, and I have to go through all my potions just to stay alive. It is ridiculous. I hate the poison, which makes the rats a lot more threatening now. Um, I came across a metal boar, which I couldn't figure out how to what to do with it. So I'm just running around, and I see like this weird like barbecue fire thing. I'm like, oh, what is this? And I'm like hiding around because he's chasing me. And turns out you just got to get the boar to run into the fire, and he just melts. And I was like, oh, that was easy. But again, it felt like another boss was just killing itself. So after the first four hours, I'm just left like, I feel like an idiot wandering around a dead land and accidentally killing off everything without really knowing what I'm doing. And it's so unrewarding. I'm like, I'm just an idiot <laughs> stumbling my way through Dark Souls right now. It's kind of dumb. Um, I also picked up the ax uh, and I saw that the ax does more damage and it's one handed, which I like. It feels faster. No, it doesn't feel faster. It just feels more powerful and it doesn't feel like there's a big trade off between the ax and the sword. So I've been using uh, ax and shield now. And I made it to a part where there's like the big like shield like bears that cover like their entire bodies. And I tried to fight it with my armor and I just couldn't, I couldn't, I kept dying. And so people were like, take your armor off. You're going to be so much faster. So I did that. I took all my armor off. I am this dehydrated raisin and wait, a raisin is a dehydrated grape. So I'm a raisin and I can actually roll. I can move. I can still take a hit or two. And I killed them being naked. And I'm like, what is the point of armor in this game? I see no appeal to armor. It just slows you down and it doesn't even protect you. I'd rather just focus on rolling around the monster. Oh, I think I also got like a few iframes and it felt so unnatural. Like I, I rolled through the weird, like I feel like I rolled through swords and I was like, I should be dead, but I was invincible. It's weird. And... I actually ended the game naked because I'm like, I see no value in armor right now. So I'm going to keep trying to play without armor because honestly, I don't like, what's the point of it? It doesn't protect you. It doesn't do anything. And I forgot to talk about leveling up. 
So I think I'm at level 16 or so. Um, the whole Souls mechanic, I actually appreciate it more now, especially after playing Jedi Fallen Order. So I completed Jedi Fallen Order and I learned there the mechanics of Dark Souls of, you know, when you take the time to heal, you respawn everything. But if you kill the boss, it stays dead. It's all about opening shortcuts and stuff. So I really feel Jedi Fallen Order plus Monster Hunter has really prepared me to take on Dark Souls properly. And I'm having a good time right now. When it comes to leveling up, there's a lot of stats and I still I don't see the value outside of vitality, strength and endurance right now. I'm always out of endurance. So like we're putting that up. I want to kill things faster. So strength goes up. And the vitality comes third where I'm like, I guess I want to take more hits, but what's better than taking more hits is just not taking hits at all. So more endurance so I can roll and block and parry. So that is, I think, everything that I've done in my first uh, stream. And it, it's just so exciting because I know nothing. I don't know what I'm doing. There's so much stuff to discover. It's just a blast so far. I, this is the feeling I wanted. I'm not getting adrenaline rushes because I'm not coming across a, a boss. It doesn't feel as tight and well connected as Monster Hunter. The combat definitely doesn't feel as rewarding as Monster Hunter. But man, uh, just kind of exploring and trying to figure things out has been really fun. Um, so we'll see where we go next time. Like I said, I'm going to still try to go for that bell at, at the top. But there's a dragon stopping the door. I thought I could sneak around him and like come up, come up somewhere but all that sneaking around led me back to the beginning so i'm gonna have to rethink my strategy and if i can't do that i'm gonna have to go down into the depths and find that other bell um it's just cool it's just cool it's it's like 3d hollow knight in an older timeline like an older video game timeline it, it does not play very smoothly like a modern game so if this keeps up i will probably be interested in trying two three and who knows where we'll go from there uh, but otherwise, join me on Tuesdays when I play Dark Souls, and I'll be back with another journal next week. And until next time, keep it classy. All right, the fun and games are over. My innocence has been taken from me. My death counter is going up through the roof along with the bullshit counter. Jeez. And what the f is a Capra demon? What are they all doing? Hey, Jim. Welcome back everyone to a Dark Souls journey in my second journal as I try to play through all of Dark Souls Remastered and share my thoughts with you. Last week, we were all happy. By we, I meant me. Everything was going well, splendid. I'm an idiot in Dark Souls winning. I wasn't winning so much this week. I met a lot of dark and terrible things. Let's get started with the good stuff because the stream started off pretty nice. Turns out I was just moments away from the next boss, which was the gargoyle, um, the bell gargoyles. So I came across the bell gargoyles very early on. There was no cheese this time. When I got to the roof of the church or whatever, I'm like, oh, this looks like a trap. Like there's gargoyles everywhere. When I was picking out my uh, soundtracks to like play in, in some of the like before the streams, there was something that was called like a bell gargoyle theme song. So I'm like, I see gargoyles, there's probably gonna be a trap here where they're gonna attack me. I was pleasantly surprised that only one gargoyle came to life to attack me. It felt very Monster Hunter-ish because it attacked me from the sky, it had a tail, and I was like, it has a tail, can I cut the tail? And we found out very quickly, yes, I cut the tail right away. My Monster Hunter instincts prevailed. And as I was like dodging and, and working my way down its health bar, I was like, oh, this is an easy boss. And then Not another health bar showed up and I saw that there was another bell gargoyle. I was like, oh no, I gotta kill this one quick. But I did not kill the first one quick enough. The second one joined in and then he started spewing fire and I could not create an opening because there was always one defending the other with fire and I died a few times. But with a little bit of practice, I managed to, to be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more on point with my rolls and I killed both of them, unlocking the path to my first bell. And I was really expecting like a cinematic or something. I rang the bell and I'm like, <laughs> Now what? what? What's supposed to happen? Nothing happened. I rang a bell and some guy showed up at the bottom who sold me stuff. And everyone's like, buy a purging stone. I was like, a curse? What are these things? Ho, ho, ho. I would learn what a curse is a few hours later. So I was very happy I picked up a purging stone. Really regret not having bought a few more. But with the first bell out of the way, I was now all ready to go and ring the bell below, which took me through Blight Town, 
and pretty much this entire stream was me just trying to go as low as I could go, and oh my god was this punishing. This was really hard to get down there. So one thing um, I noticed is I'm getting more comfortable killing mobs. Like, I got killed so many times trying to get to the lower bell. Spoilers, I didn't get to it. Um, I kept going back, re respawning at the Firelink Shrine because I had unlocked enough shortcuts that I could just like head down constantly. And I was at the point where I was like, oh, we're back here, run, run, run. Like I was running, I knew which monsters I needed to kill, which ones I didn't need to stop and bother with. And I was getting very fast and efficient at getting back to where I died just to die again. So I think I'm getting to the point in the game where not everything is getting as scary. All the new stuff is very scary. But once I have familiarized myself with an area and I've killed like the the mini, the medium spawns, everything else is just trash spawn that I'm like, okay, let's get you out of the way. Um, but before Blight Town became trash spawn, oh my God, did it take me a while? Cause here you get ambushed by like these thieves and they were just destroying me. Like, I don't know, I felt so slow. They were just jumping on me, cutting my throat backstabbing me and I was like oh this is so frustrating so I eventually ditched um I had put on a little bit more armor for the gargoyle so last stream I said oh let's just do everything naked for whatever reason I put on a bit of armor it didn't I didn't feel comfortable being naked yet um and then going down into blight town I eventually unlocked like the whole thief outfit and I tried I was having so like I felt so slow with my big axe I tried switching to spears because these thieves were just destroying me I eventually made it past Blight Town and unlocked uh, a shortcut which lets me bypass that. So I don't know if I actually got better with the thieves or if that shortcut has just helped me of, like not have to practice killing them. Now I just bypass them and go there. Unfortunately, after Blight Town, there is the Capra Demon, the most bullshit fight I have ever experienced in my entire existence. So upon even discovering the Capra Demon, there is a white door. So I'm like, okay, there's gonna be a boss. Let's make sure our health is good. Let's make sure we are equipped. And I enter this white door to just be completely rajanged into like two dogs jump on me. This guy's like two, two double sword on me and my health just, and I honestly didn't even know what was happening. I was like, what the hell did I just walk into? What is this? So I'm like, okay, haha, -ha, funny haha, -ha, Dark Souls trolling. Let's do this again, knowing that there's two dogs in there. So I go in there and I get slammed and I'm trying to roll and the dogs jump on me and he just bashes me again and bam, back to the Firelink Shrine I go. This was so frustrating because as soon as I, first of all, the first challenge to a new player entering the Capra Demon is what the heck did I just walk into? First, you need to assess your surroundings. Second is, is recognizing that there are two dogs and a Capra Demon. So that is step one understanding what is beyond that white door. So that takes two to three deaths to figure it out. Then the next challenge was, how do I position myself safely from that initial onslaught? And so when I would walk in, I would try to roll, I would try to roll, uh, roll to the stairs to kind of isolate the dog so I could kill the Capra demon. But I was again getting destroyed. And this, this is where I learned the importance of armor. So armor does more than just defense. Armor provides you with something called poise. And poise, to my understanding, lets you take hits without getting like knocked back and getting stuck in these dumb animations. So, your guy Hey J poised up. And I put on all of the armor. Heavy roll, let's go. And I walked in there like a tank. And these dogs were jumping on me, and I'm like, I don't care. I'm walking to this, I'm walking to the stairs. You guys can do whatever you want to me. I'm walking to the stairs. And it worked. I wasn't getting pushed around. And, and having my health taken out. So after a few tries, I was actually able to kill the dogs and focus on what the heck is this Capra demon and how do I fight it? Um, he was quite difficult, but once you, there's a, there's a cheese here where you can like lock him in to the side of the stairs where you like climb the stairs, boop him on the head, run back around the stairs, boop him on the head. And you just keep doing that. And then he eventually dies. And that's what I did. And oh my God, this fight me like i was getting very close to to just being in enrage mode there is no rage quitting when you are streaming i like i'm like oh my god like i think i was at hour two when i figured this out like, i have two more hours of this i can't rage quit i'm streaming i am providing entertainment to the masses i cannot just throw my control like if i was playing this on my own on the couch i would have rage quit so quick but having an audience encourages me to kind of push through and i was like 
this is not going to be a fun night. But the copper demon was slayed, the poise was appreciated, and my knowledge has gone up. So from that point, we keep going lower. Of course, there's no there's no bell after the copper demon. You just keep going going further into darkness. Uh, so that unlocked the sewer area. We met some nice cooks. We killed the cooks. We met giant rats. We killed the giant rats, and at this point, like. I don't know, it, just, it did not feel like I was progressing a lot for the amount of time I was putting into the game, despite everyone else saying, you are doing good, like you're progressing very well. It's just like, when I don't discover a lot of new areas, I don't feel like I'm progressing. But I think the whole thing about Dark Souls is, you uncover things slowly, because you have to learn the path, the enemy layout, uh, layout, and every time you like kill like a mid-boss, like a cook or something, like that's a challenge that doesn't come back again. So there's all these like little wins that add up in the grand scheme. For example, in the kitchen, I found a guy in a barrel. I didn't realize he was that important. I did not kill him. Um, and thanks to that, he gave, I've unlocked the power of fire, which is amazing because I discovered slimes in the sewer first and I was bashing them with my ax. I was like, oh my God, this they're like 10 hits each. This is gonna, and there's like seven on the ceiling drop and this is gonna take forever. Luckily, uh, the fire spell kills them in like one hit and oh, the fire feels so good like to just like be and then just cast it. Like this is probably the most good feeling attack I have in Dark Souls right now. Shooting fireballs at people, sign me up. So we got a new move where we got the shield now, the ax, and then we got some fireballs. Feels great. Also, as I was, I think it's also in the kitchen that I found a stone which I learned that I can bring to the smithy. I got to know the smithy a little bit better. So thanks to this, I, I learned that there was a limit on how much you can upgrade your weapons. And so like I'm limited to like going to plus five and my axe was plus two or something. So anyway, we maxed it out to plus five now to do maximum damage or optimal damage as some would say. And now with the stone, I can go all the way to plus 10 with the right material. So like I've perma upgraded my smithy which is cool. Like I love finding key items in this game because every little bit helps. And anytime I find a key item that helps me get something better, I'm just like, oh yes, like progression unlocked. I was also reading a little bit more of the items uh, and I learned, so last week I was stuck in the forest by the smithy and there was like this big shiny door and I couldn't figure out how to like interact with it or open it. I discovered in the smithy for 20,000 20, souls, you can buy something that seems to interact with that door. So I'm like, oh, okay. So when I have enough souls, I can progress through the forest. So now I know that I know how to get through that part. At least I think that's what it is. I am nowhere close to amassing 20,000 souls in a comfortable run though. I'm amassing like two to 5,000 right now. So it might be a while before we go there. Um, otherwise, I spent a lot of times wandering the sewers. I really don't know where to go at this point. Uh, we discovered some beautiful holes and uh, people told me to go in the hole. I went in the hole and that's where I met a basilisk. I think that's what they're called. And that's where I discovered curse. Another bullshit move where you have to like, if you don't know what it is, you're not gonna be ready for it. So you're gonna die from it. And then you lose half your life and there's only one item in the game, which is at the top of a church. And I'm like, oh, shit, what a, another bullshit move this is. So the first time, shame on me. Uh, it's fine. No, the first time, shame on you, the chat and the game. Um, the second time I fell in the hole, I literally ran out of options of where to go. And there was another hole. And people said, people told me, jump in that hole. And I was like, I don't trust, I don't trust this. But there was more people telling me to jump in the hole than to not that I was like, after exhausting all my options, I'm like, all right, let's go see what's in the hole. And in that hole was like half a dozen basilisks. And that's how the stream ended. I'm cursed, I'm lost, and I'm morally defeated. I just don't know what to do at this point. Interestingly, interestingly enough, as a streamer, uh, I have to say the unique experience difference between Monster Hunter and Dark Souls um, first of all, I said in my very, very first journal that I was worried about the Dark Souls toxicity. I have not come, I have not come across that at all. So I'm very happy to say that. Um, but the chats are very, very different. In Monster Hunter, I can usually ask a question and get a pretty consistent answer from chat of what, uh, for advice that I'm asking. With Dark Souls, looking at the chat has become so useless and redundant because I will ask something and there is so much conflicting information. It is useless. I could say, do I go here? 
and it's going to be split 50 50 of yes and no <laughs> so the chat is really not helpful so if anyone has been watching on stream and is wondering why maybe i'm not as interactive with chat it's because it's it's very um i'm looking to chat for a lot less uh help and clues and maybe that's part of the experience a lot of people are saying you only get to experience dark souls first playthrough once in your life you should really enjoy it for what it is and i guess i am enjoying it for what it is after that last stream oh man i was not enjoying it but i have to say in hindsight in hindsight it was good and i'm sure if i would go back and like redo all that it would probably feel a lot easier because there's so much of it is uncovering the surprise and figuring out how to get through it so oh i almost forgot i uh, at the end of the stream i finally uncovered a freaking bonfire my first my only bonfire of this stream was right after the kitchen in the sewers i kept walking past it not realizing it was behind this door so i kept like trekking from the firelink shrine all the way down to the sewers when that whole time there was a bonfire i could have lit right in the sewers that would have saved me so much time so that's the type of chat i have it was there the chat watched me for hours not use that and that somehow did not crush their souls. If I was chat who knew this game and I saw someone keep missing that bonfire, I would be like, oh my God, this player is like, oh my, just go to the bonfire, stop running. Um, so I have to say like, thank you. Thank you for being so um, respectful of my first experience because that must have been hard to, to take as an experienced uh, player of this game. So next, uh, the next time I stream, it'll be uh, in a few weeks because I'm taking vacation. But um, yeah, I have a lot of figuring out to do. I don't know where to go from here, so I'm going to be lost and probably have to figure out how to fight basilisks, which I hate. So I'll see you on the next stream or on the next journal, and until next time, keep it classy. Point the sun, we're done with blight. Oh, 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 oh. Ah! Welcome back everyone to another Dark Souls journal. Progress has been made this past week. I'm so excited. The first week it was like, yeah, we're doing stuff. This is fun. I'm discovering. Week two was hard. Week two felt like what I was expecting from Dark Souls was a little demoralizing. But week three, so much progress has been made. I have overcome my wall and I have un earth all sorts of new stuff so join me as i tell you a tale of a blight town of a naked lady on a spider and a discharge that does not cease so this past week uh well when we left off last week i had no idea where to go i went into the depth and as i learned from my editor that was not blight town as i kept calling it in my last journal so i was in the depth and i was stuck at the part where there's boss lists and I was trying to avoid the holes and I really could not progress. I had no idea how to go lower. Well, after taking a vacation, reflecting on things and being like, you know what? It's time to face your fears. Maybe the only way through is to kill some boss lists and we have killed a many monsters in our days. So I'm like, you know what? We're going to go in the hole and we're going to kill those boss lists and we are going to plow through this game. So into the hole I went, a basilisk I killed, and somehow I didn't find any others, and that, that was it. I progressed. So avoiding the basilisk was really not the way to do this. All I had to do was confront my fear, kill it, move on. Um, so from there, it gave me access to that big open area in the depths where I knew that there was a boss, and of course we came to the white door. We poked in there, and there's a little alligator that's like, I'm your boss and you're like oh that's so cute and then it's like Rawr, the big gaping hole with a bunch of teeth in it which is nightmare fuel it was disgusting it's called the gaping dragon I hate it and it killed me on one hit when I just looked at it because I was like oh I can surely fight this and then it just went Homp, nope you're dead in true Dark Souls fashion at this point I was still cursed so I was like there's no point in going back and fighting the gaping maw of teeth and so I went on a quest to gather some souls so that I couldn't curse myself because my broke ass couldn't afford any anymore. Uh, so I learned about farming at the Drake. I would go up to the bridge where the dragon was. He would flame all the undead, give me 500 souls, go to the bonfire, rinse and repeat until we have 6,000 or I thought 4,000. But then I learned it's 6,000 because the moss lady, she really ups the fee on her stones of of purification that gets rid of your curse so anyways we got our six thousand souls we got our purification stone the moss lady was happy she got to pet her moss and 
back we went into the gaping maw, sorry, the gaping dragon, and slayed it we did, but not without some troubles. So this was a big clunky monster, which I'm like, all right, I've killed lots of big clunky monsters. I'm down for this. I can do big monsters. Lots of teeth, a tail, four legs. I got this. Um, for the most part, I did. But he hit hard, and the few times he would get me with the jump. When he jumped, I couldn't get the camera up because, you know, we're dealing with like 2000 camera, like the year 2000, but like 2010, whatever. And I just couldn't get the, and then he would land on me. I couldn't get the camera to work, and he would land on me. And that would kill me. And so I regained my humanity, as per uh, suggestion of the chat, because there are things to learn about having your humanity. And before the dragon, there's a message and it's like, do you want to summon like help or Solaire or something? And so I was like, you know what? I hear so much about Solaire. I want to know all about the praising the sun. So let's get him on board and see what Solaire is all about. And so Solaire showed up and the chat assured me that this would make the fight easier. But they said, you know what? If you want to experience Solaire, now's the time to do it. You can cheese this fight. Just don't cheese the fights after. So I was like, all right, Solero pal, come with me. So Solaire came, he hacked away at some HP on the, on the gaping dragon. And he died, unfortunately, if he's not dead already. But that did help me get that health down, which let me finish it off with a few hits. I learned that, you know what? You cannot like parry or a block these things. So off with the shield we went, two-handed ax, off we go, and the gaping dragon died. And a big sense of achievement, progress, and victory for me. That gave me the key to Blight Town, but more importantly, it also gave me 20,000 souls, which I was like, hey, wait a minute. The last time I was at the smithy, he had an item that cost 20,000 souls, which gives me access to the forest. So instead of going further south or further down into this hell hole, why don't we go see what's in the pretty forest instead of going to what is probably going to be Blight Town? So I went back to the smithy, got my stone, killed the little mini boss that threw lightning there. He actually turned out to be easy now that I figured out how to move in this game a little bit. So I killed that stone thing off into the, the woods I, I went to get molested by trees. And I opened the door and I walked in there. I was like, yeah, new area. And then like a wizard and a knight ganked me. And I was just so scared because they killed me a lot. And I was like chopping at their health very little. So I was like, this forest is terrible. So people are like, just try again, just run, just run through them. So off I went with my clothes, naked boy, let's go. And I booked it through the forest, streaking like a little naked man that I was trying to avoid everything and I ran one direction and it just attracted a bunch of trees that made a whipping pole out of me like I got stuck on on a cliff and I looked back at these trees in my little naked body and they were like it's time for a whipping and they whipped me good and they killed me and then I went back for another naked streak and this time I did not run towards the trees I ran towards other trees that were not so alive and I ended up with like a cat thing. I was like, oh no, what is this like cat hedgehog badger thing? And I started fighting it. I was like, oh, I can maybe like win, but I was still like really panicking. And then a second one showed up. I was like, oh no, what are you doing? And I'm like, wait, this one's almost dead. I can do it. And I kill it. And then the third one shows up and I was like, oh no. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this. I'm getting out of here. So off I went streaking further into the forest. I really don't know what happened. This was the wildest moment of Dark Souls I've ever had. I didn't know, I had no orientation. I ran, there was a cat. I thought it was like gonna be a demon thing. It turned out it was an NPC. So I ran by that. I kept running, I kept running. And I ended up at the beginning of how I entered the forest, having achieved nothing but picking up some gear that I'm probably not gonna wear. So that was a journey and a half. I'm not looking forward to going back into that forest because it was creepy. I also saw some mushroom man. You know what? They look so innocent. I was like, hell no. Anything in Dark Souls that looks menacing is deadly. I bet you the cuddly cute things are probably even worse than that. I've seen enough of these games to know the cuter it is, the worse it is. So I didn't even go close to the mushroom man. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take my chances in Blight Town. Let's go. So I went down, unlocked the um, the door to Blight Town, saw this big hole. And the first thing I see is this big chunky dude. And I was like, oh man, mini boss already. And people are like, ha ha ha, not chunky dudes, regular, mo regular mobs. I was like, oh, are you serious? Blight Town, I have to deal with this as like my common enemy. And so the first one, you know, it was, it was a struggle, but then I realized, wait a minute, when they're big, they're slow. When they're slow, I can parry. So I was like, it's time to bring back the parry God. And so parry we did. And I was able to parry all these things. 
and I was not panicking. Like I actually wanted, I invoked the parry skill and I could kill all of these fat dudes uh, pretty easily with parry. Then we ran into the skinny dudes. Those guys killed me once, but then I learned that, you know what? We're not gonna parry, we're not gonna dodge. Four hits on them and you can interrupt them and then just spam four hits and they're done. So I just made sure to hit them before they hit me. The big dudes I parried and then the rest of it was pretty much just platforming. I ran into this thing that people called, I think like Darth Dart or something. Anyway, the guy that shoots like little poison darts at you from afar, most annoying character ever. So I would seek him out and kill him every time because he stays perma dead. Uh, the rest of Blight Town was pretty, honestly, not as bad as I thought it would be. I just kept like exploring, working my way down. I did not struggle as much with the enemies here as I did with all the other like areas. And I think it's just because I'm getting comfortable with the play style of the game. So I think it took me about an hour <clears throat> and I made it to the bottom of Blight Town. Luckily, um, people told me that there was a bonfire in the area. So I actually actively looked for it because the first time I missed it, that sent me all the way up. If I did not find... <coughs> If I had not found that bonfire, it would have probably felt worse having to go down every time I died. But I don't think I died that much in that area. So, made it down to the bottom of uh, blah, 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 Blight Town and made it to this swamp. And that confused me for a while because I was like, where am I supposed to go? Everything poisons me. I saw a tree and chat all went like, yes, yes, go to the tree. Like, I'm like, okay, there's clearly something that's going to kill me in that tree. So I didn't want to go. I went to the tree anyways, because I'm like, I don't know where else to go. I climbed a tree, I found a chest, and I left. And then people were disappointed, because apparently I didn't trigger the thing that was in the tree that they wanted me to trigger. But I was like, this seems like a dead end. I couldn't figure out what to do. So I kept walking around, and people just kept saying, you want to go down, you want to go down, the swamp is the place to go. And so I kept like hugging walls and moving around, and then I saw like from afar this like big spider nest. I was like, ah, that's probably where we got to go, and I don't want to go there. So before I went there, there was like a conveyor belt that confused me, but going up the conveyor belt, um, unlock, like I, I found this spell that, uh, gives you immunity to poison. So I was really suffering from a lot of poison. Like I was going through like moss, like crazy. I had stocked up on a lot of moss from going in the forest because all the trees drop moss. So let, actually the forest was a good thing in hindsight, cause I had all this moss to protect me from the poison. So anyways, when I got the spell, I was like, Oh, finally I can get rid of the poison. But turns out. I'm too dumb to learn, like literally my character is too dumb, his intelligence is not high enough to learn that spell and it would be five levels to grind intelligence up. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to get that many levels at the rate souls are dropping. And people are like, it's it's just too late. They're like, you can't build, you can't spec and mage at this point. I'm like level 30. So I was like, okay, this spell's useless. Let's go, let's go see the spider. And I was like, of course, a spider in Dark Souls makes sense. It's not that I don't like spiders. It's just that I find them really gross when they are in big boss form and you can see like all the hairs on their legs and they do like, like that sound. It's just disgusting. Um, so I was going in here with like, what am I going to see? And a spider we saw, but a half naked lady we also see, which like kind of balanced things out. I was not expecting a half naked lady to be on the spider. And so, all right. Um, so I fought this. Of course I died, but... Uh, this was one of the funnest fights. So this was Chaos Witch Quilag. And I have to say this felt like this felt like Monster Hunter in, in a way. It was a fight where the monster had a like a, a, a very easy read on what it was gonna do. It had a very like comfortable arena to move in, unlike Capper Demon. And it was just, it felt like a fair fight. So I learned very early on that I want to stick close to it because if you go too far, she does her like sword moves and then you're gonna die, especially when she thrusts you. She like invades you from the front. She, her invasion sensation is through your face and you just, you're dead. So I'm like, okay, I gotta get away. And then I learned pretty early on that when she lies down on her spider, that's like her big boom. So if you see her go down, you gotta like roll back twice really quick so you don't get caught in that or else you're dead. So once I learned those, it was just putting that together and whack away at the spider. We don't need the shield because we can't block. So two handed, let's go. And then it's just follow it, stay close to it. Hack, 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 roll, roll, roll away. And the thing died. It was a very satisfying fight. Cause yeah, you have to die a few times to learn what like it's gonna do. But once that clicks, oh, it feels great. 
So from that, we rang the second bell, and finally this big gate opened up near the Onion Knight. And I was like, oh, whole, like, there's so much done. My initial quest of ringing the bells is done. I don't know what it did other than open that gate. It really feels like I just started the game, honestly. Um, so from there, out of... I don't know why, there was a wall that was calling to me, and I'm just like, this wall looks suspicious, and I rolled towards it. And it turns out it was an invisible wall. And through that, we found the... Uh, oh, I didn't write the name. But we found, I think, the spider lady's sister. There was like another spider lady stuck in the wall. And you could offer her humanity and you could like pledge yourself to her. So everybody said do it. I don't remember what it did. I think it gave me like another fire spell. Um, I, I don't know if this is good or bad or what I should do with this thing. It was just kind of cool because now I'm starting to see like a world come together that oh okay we these bosses have siblings one of them is was bad this one's stuck in the wall why is she there she can't talk to me apparently there's an item that lets me talk to her so i was like oh cool so then we keep going and now we're like in hell everything's lava and there's a bunch of things to explore so i'm getting close to the end of the stream so i'm like let me just like look what's out here and of course there's like this big like demon fire thing i was like oh wow another boss right away and it was like i'm like i don't want to go near that and people are like, it's sleeping, it's sleeping, go see. So I'm like, okay. So I like tiptoe near it and it's not doing anything. Like I'm right in front of it. And I was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And it's not moving. And then I see a shiny. So I'm like, let's go see what that is. And turns out it was like a dead knight um, or something that had, I guess, the spider queens like clothes or something. So as soon as I stole that, the ceaseless discharge, as I learned it was called, was not too happy, opened up into a boss. Turns out it's like her brother. And he came at me and I'm just like, no, I'm not ready for a boss. So like, I'm just running. I'm like, let's go back to the bonfire and call it a night. So I run, run, run. And I get stopped by the white wall. I was like, oh no, I'm stuck in a hallway with a white wall. So like I'm fenced into this corner and there's this massive ceaseless discharge coming at me. And I'm just like, what am I going to do? And then like a big like tumor thing drops in front of me. I was like, what is this? And I'm like out of pure panic i'm like stuck up against the wall i'm like well i'm not gonna go down without a fight i start hacking at the tumor and like i see that it's hitting the the boss's life a bit so i'm like all right we're, we're hurting it and it only takes away maybe 10 percent of its life and then all of a sudden i just see all the life go away the whole thing falls into the lava and dies and i'm like what the heck just happened did i just kill another boss was this like another hack did, was this supposed to happen is this like the the whatever that uh the torah taurus demon like jumping off the bridge did this just really happen again and i'm not sure if like that's how you're supposed to end the fight or if i found a secret like way to kill it easily but anyways he died so another boss off the list off to the bonfire i went and i'm just like whoo what a game like what an emotional roller coaster of stuff so that's where i'm at now i have three areas i can go i think i think i can go oh yeah because killing that thing drained a lot of the lava so i can go further into hell now i can go through the gates into the castle or i can go back to the forest i don't know what i'm gonna do i'm probably gonna start the next stream by going more into the lava because i'm there and then the second place i'm really curious to see what's in that castle and then the forest i don't want to go back there because i got i got whipped bad and i don't I don't see any appeal of exploring that forest. Things just feel too powerful there. So we have about 20 bosses left to kill. And I am I feel like things are starting to click for me because I feel like this was a comfortable amount of progress. So let's go. I'm not as scared of the game now, but hey, maybe we're going to hit another wall. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this game has to offer. So that's where I'm at. I'll see you in the next journal as I make more progress. And until next time, keep it classy. Man, screw Dark Souls. One week I'm riding high on dopamine and the next I'm just depressed and dying figuratively and literally in this game. And uh, I, I don't know how much longer I can take this. Hey, Welcome back to another Dark Souls journal where I journey my first playthrough of Dark Souls in these very sad and depressing journals. And now the trend is, as we are number four, the trend is one week, oh my God, this is so fun and exciting. And the next week is, why did I pledge this? What am I doing with my existence of playing such a hard and unforgiving game? I'm going to be honest with all of you. 
The Monster Hunter story was a very beautiful story. Man hates game, man discovers community, man discovers game, and falls further in love. It's, it's a beautiful story of me falling in love with something I didn't know I loved. I was expecting that with Dark Souls, but this is an abusive, toxic relationship that is just not healthy for me. It's... So there was the first stream was like, oh, I'm discovering nice things. This is like, I get it. I'm getting like these dopamine hits. But after this past week and experiencing it, uh, th this darkness with the Capra Demon like two weeks ago, it's, it's just soul draining. Like sometimes I literally feel like giving up. Like I am committed to my four hour stream slot. And I have to admit, sometimes I do not want to play the game anymore because it is that frustrating. And I don't understand because when I went into this, a lot of people said, if you're, um, in general, the, the general consensus was the hardest parts of Monster Hunter are harder than Dark Souls, I think is what it was. And people are like, oh, you, you killed like Alatreon, Dark Souls should be easy. I respectfully disagree. I think Dark Souls as a whole is more difficult and more painstaking to go through than Monster Hunter. At no point in Monster Hunter was I really super frustrated and was like, Ugh, this this game is crushing me. Dark Souls is, is crushing me. I'm struggling. I'm in a phase of struggle right now. Last time we did a journal, I was in a phase of ecstasy because I felt progress and progress was made. And I actually like made it through uh, Blight Town in a pretty reasonable time frame with a reasonable amount of deaths. This past week, I felt like I made no progress. Last week we left on the, on the high note of, oh, I got this whole lava like demon land to discover. What's beyond the gate and what's in the forest? Turns out it's just death, death, death. Literally an army of Capra demon over there. Uh, the forest has more of those butt whipping trees. And what's what was in the, oh, the freaking fun house, Sen's fun house. We're gonna talk about that. So everywhere I went, I just got like punched, punch, and it's not even like, they're not even laughing at me. It's literally, what are you doing here? You fool, I will beat you down. Don't you dare come back. And now I'm like, I have to go there, sir. The game, I, my pledge is to get to the credits. I have to go through this area. And it's just, it's so punishing. That said, I literally didn't feel like I made any progress because I got denied out of all three of those regions. But as I made my notes and I watched back the stream, I, I like wrote down a lot of things. I was like, you know what? I actually saw quite a few things. So maybe I made more cro progress than I realized. It just doesn't feel like progress because this place is so depressing. So hey, welcome to Dark Souls. All right. So last time we killed the um, the Ceaseless Discharge. Terrible name. So I go down like, ah, oh, cool. What's in this uh, land of fire? And people are like, you see those? You see those demons over there? I'm like, yeah. They're like, those are uh, the first boss times six. I was like, we're not going there. So I go over and I see a shiny. I'm like, oh, a shiny. And then out of the corner, Capper Demon shows up. I was like, what the hell is he doing here again? At first it was what the hell, but then the second was like, oh, big open area. He doesn't have his dogs. I'm like, that means Capper Demon's easy. So after uh, walking back from the fire, uh, from the bonfire, after he killed me a few times, I learned that, no, no, I still, I don't have the stairs either to cheese him. So now I actually have to learn how to fight him. So the first half hour is like, Damn you, Capra Demon. I'm going to get through here. You're not going to hold me back. And after the Capra Demon is slayed, I'm like, finally, I can progress in here. And then the game's like six Capra Demons all at once. And I'm just like, are you bleeping kidding me? Are you kidding me? Uh, uh, the, it's literally, okay, like if, it, let's say if I was actually doing this all in like one chunk, like this past part, it's go through Blight Town. Okay, it's like I've suffered through Blight Town kill the naked spider it's like okay i've killed the naked spider now you've got ceaseless discharge which if you don't find the cheese it's it can be intimidating but anyways you kill the ceaseless discharge and they're like okay now a capper demon you're like oh this guy again. and then they're like now six capper demon and who knows for all i know beyond those six capper demons it's probably a hundred capper demons that you have to like run around in a circle and do like some special dance to like make them spontaneously combust i don't know but anyways i hold myself out of there because i'm not i'm not playing um so I made it up back through Blight Town, but I found like another like little shortcut to, to connect things. And we ended up in a lovely place called Valley of the Drake. Now this place felt fantastic because I saw the sky and that was refreshing because for the past two weeks, all I've been doing is going more and more into darkness and depression. So now I could like at least be in the open air of depression. Um, I was sure I was going to get fried by a dragon flying overhead. Luckily that didn't happen. So we wandered a bit around. And then uh, I took an elevator 
ended up in, I believe it was New Londo Ruins, which was very, no, that's not where we went. Maybe it was where we went. Yes, it is. And I was like, this place is so uninviting. I don't even want to know what's in there. We had three areas to explore this time. The Demon Ruins, the Forest, and the um, Beyond the Gate. So I'm like, I already know what's in the Forest. I've, I'm definitely not going through the Demon Ruins right now. So let's go see what's behind this wonderful gate. So I made my way back to the elevator and arrived at the, um, the Firelink Shrine where chat was having a good time because now they're all laughing because apparently my actions earlier in the game led to a series of events which has killed my fire keeper which i didn't even know there was a keeper to this bonfire it's literally a bonfire like everything else but now my bonfire is out i can't save i can't use it everybody's dead here and they're like you shouldn't have killed the parry dude at the beginning and i'm just like so, i'm like how did these consequences of these actions I had no idea would do things and apparently I left another guy live and now my fire keeper's dead but more importantly I've lost the save point and I was just like why is this game such an a-hole like if if you could personify Dark Souls it's an a-hole that's it's just a big dick of a game so I don't have my Firelink Shrine anymore made me really sad so I'm like well I guess we're gonna go see the smithy and that's gonna be our new home we're gonna save there uh, because that gives us access to the forest, gives us access to what I've learned is Sense Fortress, which, ugh. But before we got there, there's this like weird creature now at the Firelink Shrine that popped up, which I was sure he was going to eat me. Turns out he's actually like a friend. He kind of reminds me of the dog from um, uh, the last, the never ending story, but like more Dark Soulsy. So anyway, I made a new buddy. He gave me a bunch of story tips, which went way over my head. I just learned I am the chosen undead. I have to kill Lord Gwyn, the great Lord Gwyn, and I have to acquire a Lord Vessel and a Nora Londo. All these words mean nothing to me. So all I know is that I rang some bells and I lost my Firelink Shrine, and then th these doors open to Sense Fortress. So I'm like, all right, let's go see Sense Fortress. I've got a save point right outside. This seems nice. So I walk in and there's a booby trap and my weird positioning got the arrows go next to me. So I'm like, ha ha, outsmarted the first trap. And then some big snake man came out and killed me. So I was like, all right, I can do it. I can deal with this new enemy. Let's figure it out. So I found out you can dispatch one of them by luring them towards you, stepping on the booby trap and you kill them from behind. So that's one dead. And then the other guy, you just got to learn how to like, you know, get around him and kill. So then we go further in and I'm seeing like axes do this. And I was like, oh, 3D platforming, pish poff. I can do this. I am a 3D platforming veteran. I, I'm not worried. So I do that. I'm rolling around things. Things are going well. I'm seeing like big boulders coming down. I was like, I, this is all timing. I'm okay with this. So I was dying here and there, but overall the difficulty was like, it was okay. It felt very similar to uh, Blight Town dialed up a little bit where it's like okay i have to learn the sections there's enemies there's traps and it's all about timing now around the time i gave up is when i saw a chess and i was like looking everywhere around because this place is filled with booby traps like i'm getting shot at from all these holes in the wall so i see a chest and i'm like okay where's the booby trap there's a, clearly a booby trap and like i'm going on and on about how something bad's going to happen and i'm looking like at the floor at the walls and i'm like okay there's nothing i go to open the chest and it's one of those hidden chests. Uh, there's a name for it. I forget what it's called. But it's a chest with teeth and it eats me and kills me. And I was like <laughs> so mad that I knew it was bad, but I could not have predicted the chest would have eaten me. Um, so that's when I was like, screw Sen's fortress, or as people like to call it, the fun house. But honestly, thinking back on it, I'm like, I just need a little bit more patience. And I think I can take over it. The same way I did um, Blight Town. It's just you have harder enemies and now you have a lot more 3D platforming mechanics. But And, and there's more troll. There's more troll to it. So as long as you, you get through all the trolls, it eventually gets easier, I hope. So from there, I'm like, let's just go back to the fortress and take our time. Last time I was panicking and running around in there naked, not knowing what I was doing. This time, I'm like, let's just hug a wall and see what happens. Let's hug the other wall and see what happens. So we hugged the wall and I went back to see the cat. And the cat was like, are you a grave robber? And for some reason, I didn't quite understand how he worded the question. So I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to rob some graves. I'm going to put whatever I can on me to make this game easier. And he's like, I disown you. And then the cat got mad at me. So I'm like, well, lost the friend. Uh, then I found a door. And through that door, I found my first boss of the night, which was the great gray wolf Sif. And I was so excited to finally fight a boss. It's not the boss's 
like I got into this game to fight the bosses. After Monster Hunter, I want to fight bosses. And honestly, it's the getting to the bosses which I'm finding very hard because I keep dying to dumb things and it's just so unforgiving. So finally, I'm like, all right, let's do this. Time to fight Time to fight a wolf. So he grabs the sword and he looks like the Pokemon sword guy and he's like swinging it and I'm rolling into it. And at this point, I've been using Evade Extender and Monster Hunter and I'm like, this is like super Evade Extender. No, not Extender evade window uh this is like a super evade window because i can just roll right through the sword and i'm like timing it and he's like Ruh. i'm like time to roll through the sword and he swings and i go through the sword and then whack whack and on my first attempt i got him down to maybe he had like 15 20 percent of his health left um and then i died and then i struggled a lot for some reason the timing just wasn't working and then like i went like i don't know into like hey J instinct and we finally killed it and i got a cool ring I forgot what the ring does but boss down i was like yeah and i looked at the chat and they're like you evil man you killed a puppy and I was I've never felt so bad. Nobody was cheering for me. They're just like, how dare you, sir? You killed a very honorable and loyal sir. I was like, but you had a boss health bar like and we got a boss counter. I got to kill the bosses. So it sounded like he was an optional boss that I didn't need to kill, but he's dead now. So then from there, I went the other way uh, into the fort into the forest and I found um, a tower with a beautiful butterfly on it. And so uh, I was like, oh, great. We found another boss light. Bam, just like that. And that was the Moonlight Butterfly. So he killed me on the first time because I'm like on a bridge. I don't know where to go. And then I'm like, so I panicked and I died. So then I went again and I just started rolling like through his things. I was like, how do I, how do I hit that? It's always flying away. And so I'm just kind of like dodging, trying to figure out like how to hit it. Maybe there's like a really weird hitbox. I just so try to swing, nothing's happening. And then out of nowhere, the butterfly just like, drops its head right next to me and I'm just like what and I just start swinging at it and I like take half its health out and then it flies back and starts shooting things at me and it just like and then I'm like is, th is this all there is to the fight and everyone was saying how this is probably the easiest boss battle in the game and I was like this is so refreshing after the load and thickness of bullshit I've been through to have a boss just being like kill me sir it felt so refreshing and I I like that was a moral boost I needed the butterfly to lift my spirits up so anyways the moonlight butterfly is dead so that makes two bosses off the list even though I didn't pledge to kill all the bosses <laughs> I'm counting them down anyways um I think from that I got a key to go to the basement uh in the undead berg so back we went into familiar territory and I'm just tr like trashing everything now that I'm a little bit stronger in this area really feels good it's like it's like being in like high school and you go back to grade one and you're like, I know how to do everything. Um, so from there, uh, I went down and there was like a dude with a really big hammer. And I'm like, okay, this is like a mini boss. I like mini bosses in Dark stick. Souls. They're fun. He's like slow, sluggish, hits hard. So I was all about roll around him, get him in the back. And he died pretty quick. He was a fun fight. And then I unlocked a shortcut to, I believe it was to the forest. I'm like, oh, we're back here again. It all just interconnects. It's all the same thing. Um, so from there, I kept exploring from this new angle of the forest. We ended up back in the Valley of the Drake. So I'm like, Ugh, we're back here. Uh, people convinced me to fight like six drakes for nothing because it just leads to a door with, that's a dead end. So then I hug a wall and there's like a massive like dragon there who's like protecting his treasure. And if you go near, he just pukes everywhere. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm not messing with this. I'm too far from a bonfire to mess with this. So I just kind of like tiptoed around and ended up right back to the beginning of where we started the stream. I'm just like... Well, this feels completely useless. We're right back at the beginning. Um, made it back into New Londo Ruins using the same elevator. And at this point, I was like so morally hollow. Oh, is that why they call it hollow? Because it does that to you as a player too. Um, I'm just walking around talking to chat. And this is why you shouldn't... Don't, don't game chat and chat. Don't game and chat because... You won't be paying attention to the game. I'm just walking around like, I'm going to go back to the elevator and save. And I didn't realize the elevator wasn't there. And I just walked into an, a, a pit. I just walked into the pit and I, and I died. And that was pretty much, I'm like, I looked at the time. I've like, I've been at this for over three hours, almost four hours. I'm done. I'm just done. And now what, what do I have to look forward to? I have Sans Funhouse to look forward to. The forest is pretty much conquered and it didn't do it didn't give me anything. Even the boss fight didn't feel great because the chat's all like, you killed a poor puppy. And we've got six Capper Demon waiting for us in the Demon Pit. So like my options are now six Capper Demons or Sans Funhouse. And like between the two, I'm gonna pick Sans Funhouse, but it's like, oh man, 
there better be some good stuff beyond this. Like, when do I get the super armor or the super sword that lets me... I know there is no such thing. I know the game is hard all the way through, but like, oh man, I just want to... I just want to cry sometimes. This game is hard. It's just... It's just hard. So that's where I'm at today. We've got a lot of work to do this on, the, on this next stream. So I'll see you then or on my next journal. And until next time, everyone, just, just keep it classy. Stare the sun, we've arrived at New Londo and whoa, this game has just turned so beautiful. Amazing, <laughs> but it's also the home of the biggest bullshit yet. <laughs> Welcome back, boys, boys and girls, to another Dark Souls journal where I document my whole journey, my first journey through a Dark Souls game, and specifically my journey through Dark Souls Remastered. And the trend continues. One week we're on a high, one week we're on a low. And for the most part this past week, I've been on a high if it wasn't for the low that ended on the last stream. But I'm still hopeful. I'm not at the point where I'm like, oh, this game is so bullshit. Like, it's just I knew I was out of patience and I was out of everything by the end of the stream. And I'm just like, you know what? We're going to do this part next time. So I'm not devoid of hope. Now, some good progress has been made. I think it really helped the fact that uh, I didn't have a bunch of options to go. So last stream, I wandered this way. I wandered that way. I want, and I died a lot, a lot, a lot. Now this time, I just knew I had to get to Sen's fortress. So going into the stream, my only objective was we are climbing this fortress, we're getting through it, and we're going to kill everything in our way, no matter how many deaths it takes. And last time, I gave up because a mimic killed me and I was like, I'm done with it. I'm just, I have no patience. I am like, I had reached the threshold of, of bullshittery at that point. But this time I knew all about the mimics. Shout outs to some of you who have given me tricks on how to, how to recognize a mimic. So when you come across a chest in Dark Souls, if the chain does this, it has loot. If the chain does this, it's going to hurt you. So now I know how to recognize mimic. Apparently you can also tell if you look closely, if the thing is breathing, I'm just going to look at the chain. Um, so now we know how to deal with mimics. So first thing is, I lost my souls because I fell in a uh, elevator shaft, which really sucked. So we we hustled back, we got our souls. That was a pretty safe journey. I thought I was going to um, run into some more bullshit there, but for the most part, it was pretty smooth. And I got my my souls back, and then we headed to Sen's fortress. Now I went back to hit the mimic, and I had no idea how much life this mimic had. So the first thing I do is I smack it, and to me, mimics are just chests with teeth. But this thing has legs, like, for days. It's long and lanky and naked and just, it comes at you all like, blah, 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 blah. It's disgusting. It looks like a putty from the Power Rangers. Um, so I'm panicking and, like, the, the opening hit I did on it did, like, maybe a, a, an eighth of its life. So I'm like, oh, my God, now I got to fight this thing in this, like, really tight area. I don't know what to do. So dodging, rolling, trying to fight it. And what happens? I fall in another elevator shaft. So I'm like, all right, my biggest enemy is now elevator shafts. So I uh, go back at it and through a few uh, attempts and failures, I finally make it back through um, that part. We discover the elevator. Uh, I notice the blood on the elevator. So I'm like, okay, we probably have to get off this elevator before it smashes me into the roof. And I was correct. There are spikes in the roof, but I didn't see the spikes until I got off the elevator, explored, didn't know where to go. And people said, go back in the elevator, go up. You'll see what happens. Sending me into the spikes. So trolly chat is troll. Um, but for the most part, exploring the top of Sen's Fortress was a fairly smooth ride. Sure, I died here and there, but for the most part, it's avoid the big boulders, walk on the narrow bridges and kill the snakes without them tossing you over or killing you. They don't hit that hard. It's really gravity is your biggest issue here and the obstacles. So for the most part, oh, and the swinging axes, we got through it. And then I made it outside. Again, I feel so safe when I see the sky. If I can see this, is that why we say praise the sun? Because when I see the sky, I feel safe. So now we're outside, there's like beautiful like bridges and I see a big ogre just like dropping balls in, in, in the fortress. And I was like, oh, what's he doing? Are we gonna have to fight the big, the big ogre? And uh, we, we never did. But anyways, I'm walking around and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, everything go goes on fire. And I'm just like, what is, 
what is this? What is this? What is this bullshit? So much bullshit. And I'm not understanding. I'm like, is that ogre over there tossing balls at me when I'm not looking? I keep looking at him. He's just like dropping balls, dropping balls. I'm like, who's tossing these boulders? And after a while, it's when you look up in the other direction, you see at the top of a fortress, there's another giant ogre and he's the one tossing some fireballs at you. So this part would have been super hard and frustrating if it wasn't for the one hero in chat, which I believe is Dragon Tamer, who guided me to a bonfire that I had missed. Praise Dragon Tamer because that bonfire made made me made it so I didn't have to go through Sen's Fortress over and over again. And it's kind of hidden. You have to go off an edge uh, while you're getting chased by the big boulder that's full of fire. So once we got that bonfire, I felt more comfortable to explore that area. We killed, I think, a Black Knight maybe, or th th there were some bulky dudes bulky dudes I'm cool with. You run around behind them and you ax them in the back. It's so nice and satisfying. So we go up because uh, I'm like, all right, I got to go hit that big dude who's throwing boulders at me. So I'm going up on my way up. I see across like an opening, an even bigger giant who's fully clad in armor. And I'm just like, are you freaking kidding me? This game just never stops. But at the same time, the bosses excite me. So I'm like scary, but I'm coming for you. But first we continue going up the tower and I come across the, the giant who uh, was really not that hard. Like, yeah, he's stomping on you. But for the most part, he falls, leaving his beautiful behind open to a lovely Heiji invasion sensation. So we did some of that. We killed him. And then we found... What did I find? I found Iron Tarkus. Uh, so I summon him because I'm like, I see the big danger. If I was playing this without stream, I would summon this. Streamers on or whatever doesn't exist. I am not trying to prove anything to anyone with this game. I'm just trying to get to the credits. So come with me, Tarkus, and let's go see this iron golem. So we hustle over together, and we're both whacking away on the iron golem, and down does the iron golem uh, go. And at this point, I was really expecting to fight a character named Sen at the top of Sen's fortress. It seems to make sense. Um, I don't know who Sen is, but then at this point, like uh, the, the little gargoyles come and like they pull you up and I'm like, oh, where are we going? Wait, did I die? Are we like, uh, you know, cutscenes in this game are so rare. I'm like, what's happening? And then they take me like to this angelic city called New Londo. And I was like, did I win? Did I beat the game? What's happening? Everything is so exciting. Like this. The, the, the depression is gone from the city. Everything is marble. Everything is smooth. Everything is, has hope. There's architecture. It's not just swamps and rocks and decaying stuff. It's beautiful. I literally just stood out there for a few minutes, like looking at the architect and at the, at the game, not the game design, but the um, art, art de design or whatever, because it was beautiful. And then I see this massive knight and I look at him. And I was like, oh, are these the things I'm going to have to fight? And then he's, he doesn't attack me. And if there's one thing I learned in Dark Souls now is if people don't attack you, don't attack them. That was my first mistake in Dark Souls. I attacked my first friend. No more. So now we're in a beautiful city. I'm like, welcome home. I am being welcomed by all these knights. Nobody's attacked me. It's fine. We find another bonfire. We find another uh, fire lord or something, whatever they're called. I don't know. It was like a knight. She, she seemed pretty chill. And then off we go into our adventure for the city. Now this city was really fun to, to explore. So first up, we got a gargoyle like on a, on a bridge path. Fine. The last time I fought a gargoyle was on the rooftop. There were two and it was only hard because there were two. So I'm good with fighting one gargoyle. So down does the gargoyle go. Then I'm like, oh shit, where do I go? The bridge is cut off because of a tower that's spun and I don't know where else to go. And then I see like this like really small ledge that looks like a roof piece that goes to like a monastery. I was like, is this really where the game wants me to go? Like it really seems like it's not an actual path. So I go there and like I jump slash roll into like a balcony, which seems like I'm not supposed to be here. And I notice the, the window is broken. So I'm like, oh, you can go here. But is this the main path or is this like a side path? Am I going to get something cool? So in, in this monastery, like I get like these ninjas, which I then learn are like painting guards. Uh, they're attacking me. They go down in like two axe swings, so no no problem. And then we're in the rafters, and I see like a chandelier and something shiny on it. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I get to like knock down the chandelier and probably unlock something cool because it feels like I'm not supposed to be here. So I'm like walking on the on, on the rafters. And I'm like, oh, bunch of like I know how to deal with this. 3D platforming has been my thing forever. So I know how to I know how to walk these things. We got the armor for the poise, so I know I'm not gonna get knocked back by the little ninjas throwing like little daggers at me. So I'm literally walking and they're like shooting daggers at me. I'm like, I don't care, I'm a poise boy, we got this. So I burn them, 
get through that part. Everybody's talking about an amazing chest. I don't know what they're talking about. Uh, make make it to the tower. So now we like activate a mechanism that brings that connects the bridge to the other like main path. I'm like, oh, this is so great. There's so much progress being made. I go collect my prize where the um, the chandelier falls. It's another spell. I can't use spells. We kill everything, and then I find. Uh, Iron Tarkus's corpse and I get all of his gear so I'm like oh that's kind of cool but it's not my play style but it's kind of cool that the character I summoned died here it's all coming together I'm like getting some of the lore and also the lore like it's all about going to the city and 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 killing a lord I think and becoming a vessel I think that's what I'm doing so I'm it's like it's it's actually like enticing me to, to keep exploring um yeah, so everything connects. Uh, I go back out. Was there anything worth of note? Uh, there was a massive big painting, but I can't interact with it. One of the most frustrating things here is there's a bunch of things to interact with, but it keeps saying I don't have the device to interact with things. So I can't progress. Uh, so back we go. We, we're going to this massive like castle looking thing and uh, big guards and stuff. Got to learn how to fight them. Died a bunch of times. And then I found out that like you have to go like around the, the, the side and then I meet these archers, which are like big dicks. Cause like, they're not just shooting uh, arrows at you. They're shooting like massive metal spikes, which poise bore or not, you get shot off the, the thing. So I learned that I have to book it, run past the arrows and then smack smack. And then we hop into the castle. There we meet our jolly good companion, uh, Solaire. And then this part is fun. This part is fun because there's a bunch of rooms. It's like a whole different game. I'm, so, I'm in like inside a castle. I'm like, what's behind this room? Oh, that thing looks evil. Let's not kill that. And there's a bunch of silver knights. I think that's what they're called in this castle, which are like mm, just just perfect for parrying. So like this whole section was so comfortable because like it was all about parrying everything. It was so I my parrying skills came in again, and I'm just exploring this thing very comfortably. Uh, mimics are here too. People are like kill the mimics uh they are only want they drop good loot and you can only kill them once like they won't respawn so i got comfortable killing the long legged so long so many legs all the mimics uh there's a lot of room to navigate navigate this was a really comfortable place we went into like a basement we found all of havel's armor and weaponry so now i can like swing a dragon tooth around which i'm not going to because it's way too heavy but poise boy up we got more havel on me um use that explored everything then made it to the epitome of bullshittery which is ornstein and smoo or smo probably smo oh my god does this fight suck so you're fighting a little skinny quick guy who's all over you and then you're fighting a big blob of an ogre who's also all over you um as if fighting one boss is not hard enough in this game now you have to manage two and on top of that, there's the third boss, which is the freaking camera. If you go into a corner or into a wall, the camera's like, nope, not gonna show you the fight. And then like, you're trying to play things and all of a sudden, bam, crotch ogre in the face. I have seen so much crotch, ogre crotch. It's, it's the most, oh, it's the most frustrating thing. You're trying to roll, you're trying to fight this thing and all you got is ogre crotch in the face. You wanna roll, ogre crotch. You wanna swing, ogre crotch. You wanna live, ogre crotch, and then you die. It's just ogre crotch everywhere um this was like the absolute most frustrating fight because i was trying to study and learn what was happening and i was just getting tossed around if it's not the big ogre swinging his sword at me it's the other one just like zoop, just like coming out of nowhere and just zapping me i was like oh I'm trying to figure out this fight just give me some breathing room and then like you're you're trying to run and then you're in the corner and then bam ogre crotch um so we dialed that back a bit my um this this item i got when my fire link uh, keeper or fire trying fire keep bonfire keeper died um, that thing was glowing so I pulled that out and it let me invade for the first time uh, the the guy who murdered my fire keeper I don't quite understand how all this connects or why that's important but anyways we got a revenge we killed him and we got the fire keeper soul back so now I suspect if I bring that back to the fireling shrine I get my bonfire back which that will be sweet sweet justice but first we have to figure out how to kill this Ornstein, 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 and Smo. Be Smo? It's like dough. Smo, yes. Because this is, this is a wall. Uh, on my own, I've gotten Ornstein down to like one HP. I was so close to killing him that when I respawned, because I died, of course, because overcrotch. Uh, and then 
uh, I brought Solaire in because I'm like, this fight is is ridiculous. If they get to have two, I get to have two on my team. So we brought in Solaire. That helped me kill Ornstein, which then unlocked phase two, where Smo absorbs Ornstein's power and becomes an electrical ogre. And I panicked because I was like, how do I deal with this? And he jumped up and all this energy was coming to him. I was like, what do I do? Roll. And I ended up rolling under him and he just... I got I got squished by Ogre and then I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. So the reason I believe I still have hope is because I saw the bullshit and I'm like, I'm not dealing with the bullshit anymore. It's like midnight my time. I, I'm too tired for this bullshit. But now going into this, the next stream with a fresh perspective, I know I can kill Ornstein. It's going to take a few times. I'm going to die a few times. I know that, but I know I can kill him. Now I know about phase two. And it's just a matter of learning how to dodge and attack, just like any other thing. So I'm confident that I will get Smo, Smo dead eventually. It's just a matter of time. I just have to practice it. So I expect I'm going to go into the next room. It's probably going to take me an hour or two of banging my head against this. But they're going to die, and we're going to progress. And we're going to be that, that much closer to killing or to getting to the credits of this and fulfilling this Dark Souls pledge. So that's where I'm at this week. It's not as frustrating. There's a lot of bullshit. Uh, if anything, if if uh, if we look at the past next week, I'm probably going to be depressed because it's always high, low, high, low. So next week's probably going to be a low. So I'm not really looking forward to seeing what additional bullshittery is behind this bullshit boss because my counters say there's still like 15 bosses left. So I'm like, there's a lot of room for bullshit there. But uh, hopefully there's no more overcrotch after this because I've had my fill of overcrotch. It's just I'm tired of dying because there's no overcrotch in my face. So I'll see you on the next journal. Join me on the, on the stream if you want to see the progress of the next uh, Dark Souls stream, which is always on twitch.tv slash heyj every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. Since last week, I've learned that a lot of people consider the Ornstein and Smoo fight the best design bosses or some of the best design bosses in gaming history. I have opinions. Fist the Sun, welcome back to another Dark Souls journal as I as I descend into darkness and become hollow myself. Last week we left off on some heavy bullshittery, which is apparently the tallest wall in Dark Souls. Of course, my friends Ornstein and Smoo were waiting for me this past stream. And I have to say, half the stream was dedicated to trying to surmount this wall. But they have fallen! They have fallen! And so we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about everything else I did. But first, let's address this whole thing about Ornstein and Smoo being the best fights, best boss, like being a good boss design. Um, respectfully, I think maybe at one point that could have been true, but that is no longer the case today. Now then, let's get into this. To the, the fight consists of a small, fast boss and a chunky, big boss. One is slow slower than the other and you're in a room with six pillars that you have to use strategically now i understand the mechanic of the fight the mechanic of the fight has you focusing on one you can choose to take out the speedy one or the chunky one if you choose the chunky one you stay close to chunky while avoiding him and keeping chunky between you and the skinny one which honestly good design if you want the skinny dude, you have to isolate him by luring big guy behind a pole to create openings to attack skinny guy so that you can eventually bring it down to one. Again, that element, good design. I agree. Uh, and then when one of them dies, they absorb the other one and it becomes a different fight, which at this point, it's usually easier because you're focusing on one and it's just a matter of dodging and attacking, which for this game, we're going to say good design. Now where this boss fight fails is not so much the design but the fact that this game is a little clunky and rough around the edges for example there is one moment i walked into the boss room only to be rear-ended by a spear from a guard that was stuck in the wall what bullshittery is that bad design uh, and i get that's not by design but it's a consequence of bad i'm not a game designer or a game developer so i don't know if if, if what you would blame or who you would blame that on is it a coding issue is it an asset issue i don't know but that instantly doesn't make it good also it's 2021 and fighting with the camera on top of the bosses 
Bad Design. Now you can forgive this game for being a game from the early 2000s when cameras weren't great. Yeah, absolutely, I can forgive that. If I was in the year Dark Souls came out, I would t totally not even consider the, the camera uh, as a major factor. But now we've had 10 years to go through, like 10 years have passed, and I think we can all agree that while the design of the bosses themselves are good, the camera is an enemy. Like being close to a wall, your camera goes like, Arr! and then you die. Or it gets in the way of a pillar, and then you can't see what's going on, and then you die. Some of you might say mastering that little mechanic and the camera is part of the intended design and i will give that to you if you're having fun with it great but to me not good design i just will not ever really like this fight now there's a lot of good stuff to talk about today and i hope i'm not coming across as too condescending but those are just my thoughts and opinions on this whole fight um it did not create the moment that or the click that everybody suggested it was it would do so a lot of people have said if you can get through ornstein and smoo that is when you know if dark souls is for you or not and i am pretty much convinced at this point that dark souls is not for me um that said i still want to play this game to the credits because i am genuinely curious it is thanks to this curiosity that i now understand ornstein and smoo i had no even i had no idea or concept of these bosses in the gaming industry now i know about them and i am thankful for that I am not thankful for the pain that they gave me. So I'm going to keep going because I really want to understand what this whole game is about in the community. But I have to say, my amusement for it continues to, to decrease. The game is punishing. And I'm going to leverage Monster Hunter because I'm going to compare Monster Hunter here a lot. Because I went into Monster Hunter, the franchise, not knowing anything, expecting to hate it because I did not like all the gameplay that I did. And eventually it clicked and I loved it. I was expecting to... The same thing happened with Dark Souls, <clears throat> and it's not happened 20 hours in, and we're going to look at those differences and why. So in Monster Hunter, I know exactly what clicked, and it's the sense that there is a challenge and you have to overcome it, not through better items, not through better anything. It is right down to the player's skill. You have to play the game over and over and learn, but even if you learn, you have to put that skill into practice. There are so many times in a monster fight, I knew what I had to do, but my muscle memory or my skills weren't there yet, and I kept failing, and that was kind of frustrating. In Dark Souls, there is an element of learning as the player, you have to... Um, improve your skill but it is not as important or as critical as what you what you need to do in monster hunter the biggest challenge of dark souls is overcoming the unknown you will die a lot because you simply don't know what's ahead and it's full of these traps and these instances that once you know it becomes easy because you know not to do that or you know to do this instead and that is a very different experience than the one from Monster Hunter, where Monster Hunter, I would say, is more skill and less about just learning, like there's a learning aspect. Whereas Dark Souls really like punishes you for not knowing, but also doesn't give you the chance to learn before the punishment. Um, someone made a very good comment about the first boulder that you see in the game, and I called it bullshit originally, and I, I realized I was wrong there because that boulder hits you, you don't know what to do, and it opens up to the um, the flask for the first time, and it teaches you that, oh, the flask is what happens when you get uh, hit. Um, that is a teaching moment that it didn't register. There's a lot of Dark Souls that just kind of lacks that, and it's you have to go in blind and you don't know what to do. And there's so much to this game that I find as a player who I don't have a lot of time to spare, does not respect my time, simply because um, there's all these like NPC quests and there's a lot of things you just don't know. Like for example, I picked the binoculars at the beginning of the game. Those are completely useless. Sometimes I answer uh, things to NPCs that affect the story and the experience drastically without me knowing. For example, killing the guy at the beginning. And these decisions have consequences and there is absolutely no way as a new player that you can experience that and maybe that's what some people enjoy and love about this um but i simply find it frustrating that you have to like invest so for example if, if i did something five ten hours into the game that like set the game on a certain path i can't undo that without restarting the whole game which means i've just lost five ten hours to gain that nugget of knowledge I don't like that. I don't like when a game does not respect my time like that, which is another reason I have troubles with retro games. Um, so all that to say, Dark Souls 1 is not creating the click I was hoping for. And specifically with Ornstein and Smoo, uh, even when I compare that challenge to some of my greatest Monster Hunter challenges, I was getting more frustrated and angry at the fight. 
Whereas the Monster Hunter challenges, I was getting adrenaline rushes from the fights and I was getting motivated. And specifically when I overcame the wall, I would get adrenaline rushes. When I overcame Ornstein and Smoo, I just felt relief. I didn't even feel accomplished. It didn't feel good to kill them. I'm just like, finally, one other BS out of the way. Um, so probably not what you want to hear if you're a fan of Dark Souls, but those are my genuine thoughts and experiences. And that's just how I'm experiencing this game. Now I hear Dark Souls 3 is a lot kinder maybe to a new player and fixes a lot of the troubles in Dark Souls 1. So I am curious to go see what Dark Souls 3 has and how different it is and if maybe that's going to click better. I'm not going to pledge to do anything there. I'm just going to go try it after we are done with Dark Souls 1. So anyways, after Ornstein and Smoo, I met the lady with the amazing chest as everyone would like to uh, describe. Um, and she gave me or this is Guinevere. Yeah, she gave me the Lord Vessel, which is like, ah, plot element. We finally get to progress the plot. And now we can warp to bonfires, which I'm like, oh my God, this is an amazing, an amazing thing for this game. The fact that I can finally warp, like it, that made the Ornstein and Smooth fight. Like it's a really good reward for the relative to the difficulty of the fight. Like that is the type of reward you want to give in Dark Souls. And it's relative to the challenge. Like this was a great challenge, but it was also a great reward. So being able to jump around bonfires, game changer. Like finally, I felt hope. I felt positive energies from this game. It's crazy. So we went back there. I had the, the soul of the fire keeper. So we relit the firelink shrine. Like this was just positive vibes one after the other, after all that negativity. And um, now we're progressing the story where the big snake man ate me, took me down. We put the vessel on a pot. We lit a fire. Now he's like, now you got to fill this with Lord, uh, Lord souls. I was like, oh, okay, this is a whole part. Like, this is a whole different part of the game. First, we proved ourselves by ringing bells. Then we got a soul vessel. Now it's time to go kill like four lords, put their souls in here to open a door to what I expect is going to be a greater uh, lord. I like knowing this. Like, this plot, now that I'm understanding it a little bit better, it's honestly kind of cool. So, I don't know where these lords are, so I go to the only place I have not explored yet, which is New Londo Ruins. And apologies for last journal, I called an Orlando New Londo. No, we discovered the real New Londo, and it is depressing. So I went down there for the first time, finally went across the bridge into this land with my uh, armor that lets me roll a lot, and I got wrecked by ghosts. Had to learn about Curse, which was another another challenge to overcome, and we had to poise up because I was getting slaughtered by all these huggy ghosts, and it was creepy. I didn't like it. It's dimly lit. Um, so we got Poise Boy up so that the ghosts couldn't punch us around, and I killed all the ghosts in the area until I died and had to do it over again. Um, after a while, I did manage to get the water down in that area and that let me bypass most of the ghosts to explore like where we cleared the water. And now I'm dealing with wraiths, which is a whole different level of humanoid uh, combat and some slime things, which are absolutely disgusting, but it seems like they don't respond. So I'm all about monsters that don't respond in this game. Uh, I ran through a horde of monsters and fell down this massive pit, but I hadn't equipped a ring. So it's like the void has consumed you or something. I was like, oh man. And I actually understood this part where they're like, oh, there was this old knight uh, who was able to like cross into the void or something. And I was like, hey, that name sounds familiar. That's the, that's the guy we visited his grave and his dog was there. And of course, when I killed the dog, I got his ring. So I'm like, oh, I got to put the ring to go through the void. Like, oh yeah, I love, I love it when the plot like starts connecting. See, that part of Dark Souls I do like. I do like the world building that they have going on. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, it reminds me of uh, Metroidvanias. So we put the ring, we go in the darkness, and then we are surrounded by absolute darkness and there's a little light and I am scared and I panic and this thing attacks me and I'm like, roll attack, roll attack. And of course I die because I panic. Never panic. What that's that's good advice in gaming usually. Um, so that thing terrified me and I'm like, I can't, I can't deal with this. Like, I don't know, like my, I think it was too late in the stream. My tolerance for like difficulty and bullshit really decreases fast in this game by like, if it's anything after the two hour mark, I'm like, forget it. I don't want, I don't want to do this right now. It's just too much. So um, I've also heard that is the most difficult of the four Lords. So maybe we leave that for the end. Um, from there, I hung around because I learned that there was an amber that lets me upgrade my weapons to level 15. So I found the amber and we now have our great axe or battle axe. 
It's one of the two. It's the one that people don't like. I've upgraded that a bit, so we're doing a little bit more damage. I did try to play around with new weapons, um, specifically for the Ornstein and Smooth fight. So I was trying to... Um, I learned that the Man Serpent Greatsword is one of the top 10 swords for a strength build. So I tried that, upgraded a bit. It does less damage than my axe currently. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure about the animations. They're not quite as fast as my axe. It's really hard to give up my axe at this point. But I am trying to upgrade different weapons just to get a sense of what I can do. I think I made a mistake by going strength. I think I would have preferred faster weapons and I should have went dexterity. So that's an example of something I don't like about the game because now I didn't know that. Now I do after 20 hours. But to experience it properly, I would have to go back, sink in all that time to re-level, rebuild dexterity. And then maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't. I'm not ready to find out. Um, so after the New Londo Ruins uh, terrible experience, I went back to the um, Firelink Shrine. And I don't know how I missed this, but there was a graveyard right behind the Firelink Shrine. And I specifically remember when I first played this game back on the PS3 and I like put in an hour, I went to the graveyard first and I gave up on the game because I was like, this is too hard, I don't like it. So somehow I missed that in this playthrough and that's like an early section. So I'm in the graveyard and I'm killing everything and it is fun because nothing's hurting me and I'm a lot more skilled, I know how to move and like all these skeletons, I'm just like, kill, kill, grab the souls, grab the souls. I'm like, oh, I feel like OP, finally something good in this game. So uh, the graveyard opens up to the catacombs, which is a whole other section and it just felt so comfortable. like. Nothing here felt hard, which means I was left to just explore comfortably. I'm like, oh, what's over here? Oh, there's skeletons. We kill those. And then we get to explore. I like the exploring stuff without the punishment. Like the fact that I can explore comfortably and kill a few enemies. I like that. Just the other areas are too hard sometimes. Uh, so we make it all the way down to catacombs and I come up to my second boss of the night, which is pinwheel. And oh my God. God was he easy at this point. I mean, I'm like level 55, so it took me five, six hits and he went down. It felt awesome. This doesn't happen a lot in Dark Souls that I get to have this kind of difficulty. And I have to say, I am enjoying the dialed down difficulty from time to time, especially because I'm not getting adrenaline rushes from all the other fights. I just feel relief. So from that, I got a Rite of Kindling. I ended the stream, so I actually don't know what that does but I think it increases my flasks to 15, if I understood correctly, which I'm all for more healing. I love these perma upgrades. It makes me feel like I'm progressing and getting stronger. And uh, I got a mom mask um, or the mask of the mother and everybody in the chat's like, oh, you don't got the dad or something. I don't know. Apparently this is a meme and I didn't get the right mask. Um, I don't know what's up with the mask. I don't understand the memes. Please link me references so I can learn more about this community. Um, and that's where we ended. So I still don't know where the other three lords are. I think one is in the demon ruins. So we might have to go there. And then there's two others. I think there was one in the graveyard, which is why I went there, but I didn't find it. So, and then the third one, I don't know where they're at either. So I'm going to learn where they are. We're going to try to knock down some lords next week, maybe one or two. And uh, we're getting that much closer to the credits of this game. And I'm getting at least what I wanted out of it, which is understanding Dark Souls. And I understand it more than ever now. And when this is all done, I'm probably going to check out a lore video because I am interested in understanding how this world is all connected and what happened in it and who's, who's who and what happened. Um, so that's it for my updates now. I'll see you on the next Dark Souls Journal. And until next time, keep it classy. Friends, remember in a journal I made a few weeks ago talking about I wish there was a magical sword and a magical armor piece that could just, you know, make this game. And I was like, that doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Well, I'm happy to say I was wrong. And the RNG gods have shined their light on Hey J, aka me. And they have given me this awesome weapon, which has really changed this game around. Slap that sun. Welcome back to another Dark Souls journal. This is going to be a happy journal. I don't even remember if my last journal was a was what was a depressing one or up. Remember, we are always going up and down on the moods. But now I am on a high because I have unlocked what was this thing called? The Dark Knight Halberd. Oh my god, this thing. I've heard legends of it. And I had never once hoped that it would actually happen to me. And it happened in the most uneventful, lovely that like if 
if Dark Souls yeah. was another Did human, was another Hey J, Dark Souls would be like, this is such bullshit that this streamer got this weapon. And you know what? It probably was. But for all the bullshit I've been like swimming through, I will embrace it. For I now have a weapon that kills everything with one boop. Everywhere I go, I just boop. It's so much easier. I can actually explore this game and just go left and boop and boop and boop and everything just dies. So now this game is manageable. I think I can get to the credits comfortably and I don't think we're going to cry. Although I've heard the next few bosses are kind of bullshitty. So maybe I shouldn't get ahead of myself. So last time we fell in a dark hole because that's how this game works. It usually ends with me dying to a boss a lot of times or me falling into a big dark hole. Uh, so I had made it to the giant's tomb after killing Pinwheel and it was dark and oh i fell in the God. hole i was like flip a table so every time i start these streams i come back with some renewed like patience and endurance i was like all right we're just gonna take our time we got some shinies and we i would imagine this game would be fair enough to expect that if you walk in a straight line from one shiny to another even in pure darkness you won't fall and i'm happy to report that that is true if you, if you pick the correct shiny to walk towards and you just stick in a straight line you will not fall which is great now where the little bullshittery tickery tick, tickleness comes from is uh, the dark eyes in the darkness which will come out and attack you and maybe i'm being too liberal with bullshittery because i expected that like at this point you're not gonna be in the depths of a catacomb in the pure darkness and not get attacked so like if you're already telling me that this is like we can walk from shine to shine and not fall and you're gonna attack me i will allow it i will allow it it is fair game and you show me the eyes of the monster so i'm like you know what this is acceptable i can i can i can deal with this so I, i'm exploring everywhere and i have to say i may have peeped at a walk at a guide of like what do i need to get through the darkness and i learned that there's a lantern and i learned that there's a lantern in the area so I knew I kind of had to like explore to find the lantern. So maybe I cheated in giving myself hope there. What do you want? Give me a dislike. But don't. Like the video and subscribe. You know, do that thing. So I'm exploring and I eventually fee uh, meet a fellow jolly cooperator who uh, was like, look, here's a shiny. There's a bunch of shinies down there. Go take a look. And then the guy kicks me down, which was a BS move, but Dark Souls, what can you expect? And I would have been mad if not for the fact that he kicked me to the lantern. And so from this point, we had the lantern, we were in a good mood and the chat was telling me not to kill him. And I was like, I am holding back every ounce of vengeance in me not to kill this man. But if the chat says it, I will allow it. We will not kill this man. If there's anything I've learned is you don't kill the NPCs in this game because killing the NPCs has done nothing but harm me at this point. So if it wasn't, you know what? The game is kind of cruel that way because the first NPC, I killed and the game punished me for it. If the game had not punished me on the first one, but rewarded me, I would have killed more NPCs. And if that would have been like having negative consequences, then the game could have gotten me even worse. So the game missed out on trolling me by not rewarding me for killing the first NPC because then I would have killed more NPCs. So game, Dark Souls, you played your hand too early. Anyways, so once we got the lantern, uh, I was making my way into like the giant's tomb, whatever. And we, we met like this like dog, skeleton dog thing. And then we met the knight. I did not even realize this was a dark knight because all the other dark knights, I think I pretty much approached from the back and stabbed them. This was the first time there was an aggressive dark knight after me and he was killing me pretty bad. So I kept dying over and over to him. I'm like, oh no, it's starting. What is this? What is this bullshit? I can't get through this. And something happened. I don't know what happened, but the knight came at me from a certain direction at one point, and then he fell. He fell. I don't know why. He just fell. And then I'm like, oh, is he dead? And then all of a sudden, at the bottom of the screen, there it is. Dark Knight Halbert acquired. <laughs> I was like, oh, he died. And I got. The, I didn't even know it was a Dark Knight. And then I see the chat go, oh, like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe he got it. What, who is this guy? Like, like. I don't think chat was very happy that I got it. So it was a lot of angry comments. And I was like, oh, 
this is this the weapon because i have heard of it i have r heard rumors that the dark knights drop a weapon that like speedrunners roll for and once they got that they just plow through the game i'm like did i just get the speedrunner plowing weapon and everyone's like yes yes you did you got that congratulations you've won the game and i'm just like let's go back to the fire pit and let's upgrade this thing so transport it all the way back to the to my hammering to my blacksmith and he couldn't do anything because he, he's like i need some twinkle twinkle stones i'm like i don't got no twinkle stones so everyone's like the giant so off we go to the giant and uh, he needed some twinkle stones somehow i had a ton of souls saved up so and then i, I also went out and killed a bunch of giants to get more souls because now everything was so much easier to kill i'm just like boop dead boop dead soul farming twinkle stone make it stronger i maxed it out instantly we got the plus five halbert so now everything is a one boop and uh back i went into the catacombs i'm like all right let's go see what this boss this this lord is all about so we make it our way down there and uh i make it to a room full of like everything was pretty like cool at this point because now i'm just killing skeletons in one hit or just exploring we're having a jolly good time and then uh, I make it to a room full of fire casters. I'm like, oh, this looks dangerous. So I'm just running and like smack, running and smack. And like, again, they're dying in one hit. So it was cool. So I cleared the room of all the fire casters, jumped into a hole. And then here we found who, one who calls himself Nito. And uh, he has a bunch of like skeleton, like army stuff at his command. So I'm like, oh no. So I, the first thing I do is like, okay, if, if anything an RPG has taught me is you always kill the fluff. So I went after the fluff and I died. And everyone's like, you shouldn't go after the fluff. Just go for Nito. So I go back and I, I like, I don't want to clear the whole room again. So I just run through everything, go back in the hole. And now something screams at me. Like it sounds like a whale. It's more of a whale, not like a whale, but like a screaming whale, if you know what I mean. Like a W-A-I-L whale. And uh, the English language is so weird. Uh, it whale, it's a scream, and then like something comes out of the ground and I die. I, well, it hits me. And then I'm like, what is this? And then I'm like trying to move. And I kid you not, this thing, whatever it was, was screaming at me like three, four times. I couldn't dodge it and it killed me. I didn't even get close to Nito. I died to screams. I was like, is that a consequence of not killing all the fire casters? And so I went back in. I killed all the fire casters again, dropped in. This time, no screams. Got up close to Nito, smacked him. And then he was doing like these 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 area attacks which was killing his own dudes so i was like oh, okay that's why you don't have to deal with skeletons because nito kills his own skeletons so wiped him out after a few boops and off we went we had the first soul lord soul of a lord in our hands um i learned afterwards you don't actually the screaming is apparently a random attack from nito or a character or something and i just had terrible luck so i offset my halberd luck with the screamer luck, which I will allow. Um, so you don't actually have to clear the, the fire users. So from here, I'm like, all right, where do we go next? We can go into uh, back into New Londo and deal with that darkness and stuff, which I have a little appetite for right now. Um, I know there's something in the demon ruins, which I'm like, mm, not ready to go back there yet. So I'm like, why don't we go to the one place I don't know? Uh, apparently the, the fourth Lord was in Anor Londo. So I'm like, let's go back there. And went, upon arriving, uh, teleporting, I was like, oh, wait, what's what's to the left? I've never explored here. Like the first time I landed in Anor Orlando, I ended up going the right path, which was to the cathedral and stuff. So I ended up going into um, an area which ended up being like a library. And this is where our next Lord was, um, Seath the Scaleless. And what a, like, I love this area. It's, it's not depressing. There's books, science, like there's intelligence in this place. And I make it to see the scalers, and I was like, oh no, what is this big dragon? And it kills me. And then uh, as I was about to be like, oh my God, how am I going to deal with this? I wake up in a cell. Like, this, like it's the first time in this game you die and you wake up somewhere new. So I was like, okay, you got my curiosity. What's going on here? Uh, and the whole, like the, the whole like next thing was, I think getting this weapon has helped turn this game from a struggle to an exploration game now. And that's why I'm enjoying it more because I'm not worried so much about dying or or like being overwhelmed. I'm more now just about what's over here, what's over here, and it's all about exploring. And I love that, love exploring. So we explored, we made it all the way. Um, we went through like a dungeon, a library, uh, and then eventually I made it out to a crystal cave. And in the crystal cave, even the crystal monsters, they're like two boops and they're dead, so that was all right. 
So we make it to the crystal cave and then uh, I get like the item that's like put a shiny on the ground, which I wasn't sure what that was for. I think it was like to gauge like how far the drop is, but I don't know how it works. Anyways, discovered quickly in the crystal cave that are hidden like bridges and I'm like, oh, this is where we dropped the thing. And I was like, wait, does the rule of walking from shiny to shiny that I learned in the tombs, the giant's tomb, apply here? And after my first run, like, I, you know, I died, of course, a few times. I was like, I'm just going to try running straight and see what happens. And it was okay. This game respects one law. If you can't see the floor, run straight and you will be safe. So I like that. So then we made it to um, Seath the Scale, the Scale, Seath the scale I guess it's because he's not very fearful. He's kind of, you know, he's scaleless. Huh? So anyways, uh, Seath, he killed me a few times. I couldn't like, I was looking at him. I was like trying to boop him. I'm like, oh, he's immortal. How do you deal with his mortality? What's, what's the thing? And then it's just, you got to realize he's just a big chunky boy hiding his weak spot. And once you get past his like tentacle arms, that's where you see the big shiny in the back. Destroy that. He loses immortality. And then I'm just like, let's just go face. Boop, 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 boop. And I got a little bit too aggressive on the face, trying to get through it. Um, I died to, I think, curse, which was very insulting because then I had to hustle my way back to clear the curse. Um, so once we got all that fixed, went back in, got rid of his immortality, killed him by being a little bit more go in, step out, go in, step out. He died fairly quickly. Two, two lords down. Now I just have two left. So one, I know what they look like, and it's in pitch darkness, and I died so fast, I actually don't know how to fight it. And the next is in the demon's ruins, which now with the bigger weapon, the um, all of the demons should be more manageable, but we'll see. Uh, but I also heard the lord that lives in the demon realm is the worst and most gimmicky and most bullshit of them all. So we will probably fight that next just to get it out of the way, and then we will finish with four kings. And we will see how it goes. I mean, I feel comfortable now. I've got a very nice weapon. I've got the poise boy armor. We're all good. Let's just have a good time as we get to the credits and wrap up Dark Souls. So that's where we're at in the adventure. I look forward to sharing more updates with you in the next one. And until next time, keep it classy. Welcome back to Hey J Boops. Banish the sun for it is no longer our friend. Welcome everyone on another Dark Souls journal, the eighth one I believe, as I get closer and closer to finishing the pledge. All of the lords have been slain. All, I don't know what's beyond the door where you put all of the Lord Souls into the Lord Soul bowl for like Lord no. Soup or whatever. But I am what I think is one fight away from the credits. Uh, but we are going to be going on a little detour for DLC because this new weapon that I got, which I already forgot the name, but it's the Dark Knight Glaive or Halbert, one of the two. Um, it has given me enough comfort to be like, you know what? We can delay going to the credits maybe for a week to go see what's going on with the DLC over here. Um, but first, before I talk about my little DLC adventure, let's talk about the other two lords, specifically the four kings and the demon ruins and what bullshittery was in there. Oh, oh my God. I have never seen such, such bad, such bad boss design. Oh my God. The bed of chaos hurt. Anyways, um, so I had finished in the last stream, I'd finished the first two, uh, Lords, which were, um, Nito and the other one, the dragon. So now I was like, okay, do I go into the demon runes and explore a whole new area? Or do I go and wrap up the four Kings, which was the first Lord I went through before I got the super awesome weapon and then died to, because I didn't understand what was happening. So I'm like, you know what? Let's go see what's going on over here. So I dash in there, like I'm, I'm like I don't I don't want to I don't want to deal with stuff. I just want to kill things. I just want to get this over with so we can move on to better games. Um, so I'm dashing. I fall into the Four Kings realm with my ring of Ar Artorius, and I'm like, well, I don't need this ring anymore, and I remove it to put back my Havel ring on to only instantly die. Apparently, you have to keep the oh, ring the whole time that you are on. in that oh, dark come hole. On. 
the more you know. So that was like, oh, first death of the stream, whatever. All right, let's do it again. Let's go back. And I went back. I kept my ring on. I'm just like, take this, four king, swoosh, take this. And I think it was about three hits with the glaive. And I was like, oh, honestly, I have to admit, I, I don't really even know what this fight was. And I know a lot of you fans might be like, you didn't really experience the Four Kings. And to be fair, I don't think I've experienced a lot of things about Dark Souls the way I should. But at this point, I'm with Dark Souls 1 anyways, I just want to get it over with. This is not a game I will cherish the way that I cherish Monster Hunter. I want to be very upfront with all of you all. This is not a game that I have fallen in love with. It's a game that I went into to understand the community, understand the game. And to some extent, I understand it a lot better. You guys like hard games. I get it. And there's more to it than that. But anyways, um, I'm ready to put Dark Souls 1 behind me. And I'm probably going to go see Dark Souls 3. This game has not turned me off so much uh, from the from the series that I'm, I'm not going to give Dark Souls 3 a chance. I heard Dark Souls 2 was worse, so I'm not going there. And I heard Dark Souls 3 was better, so I'm going to go see exactly what that means. Anyways, uh, so Four Kings, I smashed his face with my glaive a few times and he died. It was the most anticlimactic fight ever. I think I finished him in like a minute. Um, so with that, we had our third soul, our third Lord soul done. And off we go to the demon ruins uh, to go back and fight some Capper demons. And I'm like, how much easier is everything going to be with this super weapon? And so like I see the six minotaurs. I'm like, let's go see what's going on over here. So I lure one of them at a time because I'm not so foolish to think I can take on six minotaurs with my super weapon. So I, I lure one at a time and there are two boops and they die. So I boop all of them. They all die. And then I go explore and I see a bunch of shinies in the lava. And I'm like, do I have what I need to cross the lava and to pick it up? And uh, I quickly figured out, I'm like, am I immune to lava? Steps in it, almost dies. Nope. Okay, can I equip fire resist and step into the lava? I put on as much fire resist as I could. Boop, boop. Nope. I was burning up and dying very fast. So I'm like, okay, we're going to come back to this because clearly I don't know what, what I'm doing to get to it. And so we headed over to the um, to the Capra Demon Lair, and I was like, oh man, do I really want to fight six to seven Capra Demons? So I killed the first one, and then I'm back to where I was in the Demon Ruins like many weeks ago. And I was like, oh, there they are. I don't want to do this. But then as I was staring, my gaze shifted, and I saw a platform beneath it. I was like, wait a minute. In an, I can just fall to this platform and bypass all the Capra Demons. I'm like, oh, this is... This is the Dark Souls design. There's always a way to bypass things sometimes. So I guess there isn't always. But in this case, there was. So I jumped down to only be greeted by a massive what? centipede, which is like, Bleh. Oh, and I have to say, like, you know, people have like arachnophobia and they don't like spiders. I don't like centipedes. Like if you, if you put a centipede here and a spider here, I would probably like go more towards the spider, depending on the size of the spider. My like personal arachnophobia kind of increases as the spider increases. Like you get a house spider, it can walk on me. I'm good with that. You get like a bigger black spider that's like this big. Uh, it can't touch me, but I'm going to be like, that's gross. Let's kill it. But you put a freaking tarantula in front of me. Oh, I'm getting out of that room. So yeah. And then you put me on Australia and I'll probably just not even touch the ground because Australia is full of big spiders. Uh, anyway, centipedes are gross. And little did I know at the time that that would be that little centipede out of the wall would be a precursor to things to come. Uh, but I got my bonfire, kept going, and came across a surprise boss. I thought we were going to the bed of chaos boss right away. So I fi I come across the demon. No, yes, the demon fire sage, which I think is a reskin of the first tutorial boss. But now he's got fire and he's got boom booms. Um, so like, you know, he's he attacks. I can't even see. All I can see are like everything below his belt because the camera can't pan up to let me appreciate what this boss is. So all I see are legs and his lower basin. And then occasionally his hammer as he's trying to hit me. Uh, this one, I would have died by attrition in the sense that I was not good at dodging him. I was good at dodging his swing, but then he has like a, a ripple effect wherever he hits and there's like a, a bomb that goes off. I didn't get good at dodging that but I got good at hitting him enough times that he died before I died. So that was done. And then we kept going. And this is where the game got really gross because I came across freaking centipede demon, which is like half man, half monster. Wait, we're getting more than two. one third man, one third monster, one third centipede. And this thing has like, I don't know, like a centipede for a head, a centipede for an arm. And you walk in, you're surrounded by lava. So I'm like, what the heck do I do? And then he's just like centipede hands. And I'm like, okay, dodge. Uh, and then he's like centipede hand. And I'm like on this like little island. And I try to boop the centipede hand and I can't boop it. Like I'm hitting it and it's not hurting his health. So I'm like, oh no. 
how do I hit this thing? And so I eventually like see that there's like a little island like through the lava and I just kind of like make my way around uh, jumping through the lava, taking a bit of damage. And then I eventually find like a platform that has a lot more space to move around. And I realize if I go to the back, it lures the monster onto the platform where I eventually learn I can do damage by hitting him in, you know, on the body. So I just have to get through his big centipede hand. And after I think two or three tries, I got him. Um, wasn't a great fight. Didn't really enjoy it. But I killed it. And I got one of the best items in the game, which is... Was it a ring? Yes, it's a ring that lets you walk on lava with very minimal damage. Which I'm like, oh, that's how you get the shinies earlier. Um, so with that, we continued exploring the ruins, which was very bright area. Um, I eventually made it to the chamber just before the bed of chaos, but then people are like, no, 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 go down here. There's something cool over there. And of course, this is the whole segment where we find out what happens to Solaire. Now I've been teased that, that I was, well, I was told I would get to a point in the game where I make a decision and that decision may or may not kill Solaire. And I was expecting like a consequence of my actions, but I came across a possessed Solaire. No, no, no. And you know, no. he's got like a he's got like a sun bug sucking on his me. head. And he's like, praise the sun, I got the bug. And it's like, no, well, I gotta kill you now because you, you're possessed. And I kill him. And I'm like, is this the decision that has the consequence that I like that I put Solaire out of his misery? Because that's not a hard decision. If my buddy is possessed, I'm gonna kill him. Like I'm not gonna let him live as, as someone who's not himself. And so our boy Solaire has died. Now, a lot of people grieved, but I didn't really build an emotional connection to Solaire, and I don't understand what makes Solaire stand out more than the other NPCs in this game. Um, is it because he's the most jovial of them all? Like, the bar's pretty low, but so he, I don't understand the love for Solaire, and if this is how his story ends, he's even more inconsequential than I realize. Now, I think some people were saying, oh, he did everything you did, by himself and without like the dark knight and that's what makes him cool but i'm like he still died in the end so he's not that great uh anyways enough about solaire um i'm i'm it's it's un i'm disappointed with what they did i had higher hopes for what solaire's story and involvement in the game would be and i thought he would really play a more important role to be so loved and cherished by the community like he did help me with with uh with those two bosses that I really would rather not remember their name. All I remember is Overcrotch. But yeah, that's about the only notable thing he did for me, which was pretty notable. So thank you, Solaire. May you rest in peace. Uh, then we get to Bed of Chaos. Bed of Chaos. Oh my God. I walk in there. Well, I slide in there. And it's it's a cool looking room. I'm like, okay. But I got my super weapon. Nothing, nothing can get between me and my super weapon. And then I see this big like tree thing. And there's fire, like a big glowy thing behind. I'm like, oh, we've been through this with the dragon. That's probably your weak spot. So I run over there. I boop the shiny thing. He goes on fire. I think that shows you like reducing his life or maybe not. But I'm like, okay, this clearly did something. And then I try to run out. And then I get swept by branches and thrown into pits. So fast forward for the next hour of many falling into holes and reading, uh, I think, like 500 tree puns from the chat. I have to give it to the chat. I have been streaming over for over a year. I've never seen the chat be so on point with quality puns. You all achieved dad status that night. If you were watching the stream live, my God, there were so many good puns. And so few repetition. I'm like, how do you how keep these puns coming? So I kept dying and dying. Time. And they're just like, pun, pun, pun. Like, they had so many tree puns. It was crazy. I can't even make tree puns that. I, I think I made one. And what was the one? I think I showed up and I was like, oh, would you look at that? And then they all, like, cringed me out of the room. So, um, I still think it's funny. Would you? Because it's all wood. Anyways, uh, so I kept dying. And turns out... You don't actually hit the boss. You just have to find a way to platform your way to the shiny thing. But then the the wall, the floor falls out and you don't know where it's going to fall out until you do it. So you have to learn where the floor is going to fall out. Luckily, the game sa like saves. So if you die and it comes back, uh, the floor has already fallen out. And then he's got like branches that are sweeping everywhere. So like there's really nowhere that's safe. And after a while, I just like, I just threw out my armor. I'm like, I don't care. My armor is not protecting me. I'm falling into holes everywhere. I need to be nimble. I need to run, bring on naked wrinkly man. 
and like it was just trial and error until I finally found the path and the timing. And then the final one is you have to like just drop in front and I was trying and trying and just getting swept and killed and tossed. And people are like, just gun it. And this is how one of the viewers achieved VIP stats. They said, just gun it. And I said, are you serious? Like, I don't think the timing works. I'm like, just gun it, fall in the hole, it'll work. So I entered the room, I just ran forward, fell, found the thing, hit it. Turns out this whole thing was a big bug. Like a, a big bug, this? it was a tiny bug. I squished it and what we got our fourth Lord dead. So worst boss design ever. I've never like, I would rather play Mother Brain in Metroid. I would rather go back to Ogre Crotch and fight him for five hours than deal with Bed of Chaos. Although, yeah, I hated that. Um, so afterwards, people I think were getting antsy that like we were getting towards the end of the Dark Souls like pledge because the credits are just around the corner. Like, go do the DLCs. I'm like, all right, let's go see what this is about. So they guide me, like chat was guiding me and thank God they guided me because I have never seen such a cryptic DLC unlocking journey just to get access to extra content. Like, I don't know what it was like when this dropped. Did, did they drop the content and they're like, this is how you access the DLC or were players forced to buy the DLC and then have to figure it out themselves. It was like, what did we unlock by buying, by giving uh, from software our money? Because this thing was cryptic. So it turns out you have to go to the garden, you have to find a Hydra. And I approached the Hydra from the wrong area. And I was like on a little island. I was like, how the heck am I gonna fight this thing? And I died, I fell in the water. I kept falling in the pit. So I kept trying to get too close to the Hydra and I would fall. So I eventually learned you have to like be a safe distance, wait for them to reach out to you and then you slice the heads off. Um, very disappointed they didn't like, I was really expecting these heads to split up and just like become some kind of Dark Soul bull bullshittery, but it was just slice all the heads and you win. Uh, so you kill the Hydra, then you have to respawn the area, then you have to run hugging a wall into this area that you would never want to or have a reason to go. You find a, no, before, oh my God, no. So you kill the Hydra, you reload the area. Oh my God, I don't remember. Yeah, you reload the area, then you hug the wall, you go and there's like a golden golem, you kill that, you, you unlock a, a ghost girl, and the ghost girl says nice things, and then you have to hustle to a library that has nothing to do with the ghost girl, and there's a random blue golem there that we saw before, but now if you kill him, he drops a pendant, and then you bring the pendant back to the ghost girl, and then she's more happy, and then there's a portal, and then there's a big spooky thing that pulls you into the portal, and it turns out we have traveled through time. We have gone back to the past, because now everything is a little bit happier. We're in a happier garden. Uh, the world doesn't look so miserable. It's called, I think we've entered the world of happy souls, or maybe more like mediocre souls, because it's definitely not happy, but it's definitely not dark. So we're in the world of mediocre souls. And here we, we eventually encounter a sanctuary guardian, which felt very Monster Hunter-ish, but I killed it. One go, let's go. Uh, then we spoke to a mushroom lady. And <laughs> as I recount the story, I'm like, this, this is such a weird thing. The mushroom lady, what did she say? I don't even know what she said, but she said things too. And then we went to the garden and then we found out that the things we were fighting in the Dark Souls world were like happier, were like tree farmers and guardians. And that's nice, but we still got to kill them. So we're killing them and we keep exploring. And I eventually made it to Knight Artorius, which is my first DLC boss, if we don't count the Sanctuary Guardian. Okay, second DLC boss. And uh, I have to say, I died. I only tried once. I died, but I'm liking where this fight's going because it felt like what a proper boss fight should be. Like I had to learn, I have, I'm observing how he's moving. I'm getting punished when I make a mistake, like a fair one. And then... Like it, it's, it's a dance. I can see that it's a dance already. So I'm like, all right, I'm looking forward to next week to finish off Night Artorias, to learn the dance, pull it off, see what other bullshitteries in this DLC. And then we're going to the final boss and seeing the credits. And then I'm going to make a journal on this channel and say pledge complete one more time. That's, that's my plan for next week. So yeah, we're in a good place for Dark Souls. I think the worst is behind us and I'm looking forward to what comes next. So I'll see you in the next journal and until next time keep it classy pledge complete my journey through dark souls is done and the world is still ending and my character is dead and everything is still depressing welcome back to the final dark souls journal where i find where i finalize my thoughts on dark souls now that i've played through the credits and can finally share 
is, is this game for me or not? Well, let's just say it did not quite click the same way it did in Monster Hunter. So I'm definitely going to be comparing those two. Um, I had an amazing chat with Rurikan on his podcast. So if you want to have a more fleshed out discussion between my thoughts and Rurikan, a veteran and an expert in Dark Souls and like a super hardcore fan, go check that out. That's a two hour discussion here. We're going to keep it short and going to recap my last stream, which had me going through the DLC and my overall view of Dark Souls and how it was like as a new player playing it in 2021. Where we left off last time was Artorius and that's where I started the stream. And I have to say Artorius was lived up to his expectations. So everybody told me Artorius was one of the best fights in Dark Souls. And I agree, like I went in there exactly and that fight was hard. He was destroying me. But I was learning that, okay, I got, he's jumping here, I got dodge here. Eventually, you know, it was one of those fights where it's like, take off the armor, you don't need the armor. You need the rolls, you need the fast rolls. And so, not the heavy rolls, but the fast rolls. And learning Artorius was not frustrating. Uh, the only thing that was frustrating about that is the run back. And I've shared this in the podcast, the fact that I feel every boss in Dark Souls has two difficulty like aspects to it. There is the fight itself, which requires a certain amount of learning and studying and practice. And then there's the freaking run back from the bonfire to the boss, which I like 10 out of 10 hate. I hate that part of Dark Souls. And that is the one part that I just, I don't know if it gets better, um, but... This is what actually made me quit Hollow Knight the first time I played Hollow Knight. And I'm realizing how many like similarities there are between Hollow Knight and Dark Souls now that I've like played the two and it's crazy. So when I first played Hollow Knight, the fact that like you would die and then you'd be sent back to your bench and then you had to like go all the way back. I was like, oh, screw this. And then I had to get my souls back. I was like, that is BS. The thing that when I eventually revisited Hollow Knight and fell in love with it is I realized if you adventured enough, the benches were always close enough to the boss fights where you didn't have to really grind out too much. If I recall right, or maybe I just got better, um, there wasn't a place after I got comfortable with Hollow Knight where I felt like there was a, a, a an overly like grindy part to get from the bench to the boss. With Dark Souls, it's the same concept where you know, there are different bonfires and they're hidden and you can eventually find like optimal bonfires to go to so that you don't have such a big trek to the boss. But even the best ones, I feel you still have to gun it through like some areas with monsters that are like attacking you. And if you get like a little lazy, you lose half your health, then you lose a Nestus. And it's just not fun. Like that, that run back is not fun. I just want to like, I died from the boss, which I'm fine with, but I just want to be back at the boss to try again, like as a player, that's what I wanna do. But instead the game makes me like go all the way through a place I don't wanna go just so I can fight the boss again. And in, in some cases, when you know that your knowledge of the boss is not great, you basically know that you're running through all of this like garbage mob just to go and get a glimpse of another boss, of another attack from the boss, knowing that you're gonna die, but you're gonna learn more. And I think that is the mechanic I hate the most because I'm, I'm okay with dying to the boss and I'm okay with like repeatedly fighting a boss. But the fact that I have to go through that journey, that run, that run back, just to get like a nugget of information for the boss, that's unsatisfying. So anyways, Artorius wasn't too, too bad for that. I think you just had to run through um, two, two uh, wood guardians and uh, for the most part you could ignore them, but it, it was like just a T, like it's just long. Like you just have to run, you have to go down the elevator and then you go back in there. Um, so anyways, once we got into the Artorias fight, it was fun. Like the, the when I finally got him, it was all about being patient, landing about one or two hits on him. Roll, 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 like dodge, 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 no! and then hit those hits. It Die! felt really good and really satisfying. So Artorias, best fight. Afterwards, um, I kept exploring and the chat guided me to, oh man, I don't have my, my notes, but I think he, his name is the Black Dragon. We're going to call him the Black Dragon. I know it starts with a K and ends with meat, but <laughs> there's like a syllable I'm missing there. Um, the Black Dragon, when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is like my monster hunter. I love it. Uh, he, he roasted me. I had the whole like Havel armor. So I like actually lived. Um, so I, I got roasted twice, lived. I'm like, I can't take this guy on. Let's get out. And I went back to the giant with the big bow who's blind and ended up shooting down uh, the black dragon. And then he's like, okay, now he's down. Go ahead and fight him. So I'm like, okay. 
So I walk in there and he's come like the black dragons coming at me. I'm like, oh, this is Monster Hunter. I'm all about the black dragons. Come on in. And the music cues. And I didn't realize that the music I use in the beginning of my streams, like the waiting screen, there's two songs. There's one that's like a very peaceful um, kind of quiet tune. And then it goes into his theme song. And I never realized it was his theme song. So when that music tri like kicked in, I was like, oh my God, this is like one of my favorite tracks. Because when I set these like stream things up, I usually go through a game's soundtrack and I don't read necessarily too much uh, what the titles are to avoid spoilers. I just listen to the tracks and I'm like, which one fits like a starting soon screen and which ones do I like? And so that was one of the songs I had picked as one of my favorite like iconic songs. And so to like finally understand where it fits into the game, I was like, oh, this is fantastic. And so uh, I got really aggressive and fought this thing like I fought all my other black monsters. And I could like see the patterns in anticipation. Like there's a part where he like does like a, a fanning flame and I see him like look this way. I'm like, oh, we're running this way. And I was like just on him like crazy. And he, he died. I think it took me two attempts. One, because I didn't know how he fought. And the second, I guess I got a little lucky and I was all about sticking close to him and just brah, 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 and he died. So I was on a high. I had just fought like two of the best mon uh, yeah, two of the best bosses uh, in my journey so far in Dark Souls. And then they're like, all right, the final DLC is Manus. So I'm like, uh, the final boss in the DLC is Manus. So go, go kill him. So I, I wander down. Everything's like kind of comfortable to explore and fight. I'm okay. I go down into like this like really like creepy like hole. And then we see Manus, which is in a dark room. He's got like this big like dark arm and he's rejaining me by like wombo comboing me and tossing me and I'm like oh I don't like this and now this is where that run back is even more painful because this run back requires you to go through a few more enemies there's a caster on a cliff which shoots things at you and laughs which is the worst part and then uh, if you get hit by that two hits and you're dead and then you have to do the run back again so just that run back segment was super frustrating and then the fact that Manus, I was not like understand. Okay, it was a dark room. I can't see like half of them because the contrast isn't great. And I'm dying to things I can't like easily see or easily dodge. And the fact that he's like comboing me like crazy, it just wasn't fun. And I put about maybe five to six attempts on him. And I was getting so enraged, I think from the run back and the fact that I couldn't like observe any openings and manus himself it was just compounding my anger and my frustration and the fact that i was seeing like that this was consuming more and more of my stream time and that i really wanted to run cre like see credits at the end of this stream it was the first time i quit on a boss and i said screw it i'm okay never beating this thing and i've never hit that level i think in monster hunter or any other game uh that i've streamed anyways where i'm like i don't want to do this this is not enjoyable to me this is not bringing me joy i don't even want to like there's nothing beyond this boss that is going to bring me satisfaction so i abandoned him and then i went uh to the lord vessel where we put all the lord souls in the big soup bowl and then we went to kill gwyn he destroyed me uh the first time because i didn't know what he was doing and people kind of like made a suggestion of like bring back the parry god like how can you not parry uh you you've been training this since the beginning i was like oh should i be parrying and so for the first time with, since I got my uh, Black Knight Glaive, I equipped the shield and one-handed it. And I went in there and I was like, okay, so you guys say I can just parry this guy. And we just bam, poke, bam, poke. Uh, my first attempt with the shield and the Black Knight Glaive, we killed Gwyn. And then uh, from there, there was a bonfire. So of course I lit it and I set myself on fire and died and the credits rolled. And then they sent me back to jail, leaving me with a very unsatisfied feeling of why did I play this? Why, what did I get out of this? Um, afterwards, we spent about an hour uh, watching, we being the chat and I, uh, watching lore videos to understand how it all works. And I was quite surprised that when we were watching like lore recap videos, I felt nostalgic where they're like, uh, chosen undead, you must ring the bells to unlock the gate to, uh, you know, and Orlando where you will get the soul vessel. And I was like, that's when I realized that the journey of Dark Souls, the pilgrimage, is, is such a like, I don't know, it's, it's such a special or unique, I'm not sure what the right word is, but that journey, like if me, someone who I would say mediocrely enjoyed the game, felt a nostalgic 
already an emotional, like nostalgic resonance to someone recounting the lore to me. I can only imagine what that must be like for a player who really enjoyed it a lot more, how much more of an emotional connection that must be. And yeah, so so I think that pilgrimage and the fact that now I understand, I'm like, I know what the Dark Souls journey is all about. It's all about you go up, you ring the bell, or you go down and you ring the bell. You can go in either direction. You ring the bells, you go through uh, Sen's Fortress, you go to Anolando, you get the Lord Vessel after killing the big two dudes, then you collect all the other souls, and then you, you kill the, the, the god of, or the lord of fire, and you bring either an end to the to the fire age or you extend it a little bit longer uh being part of that knowledge is cool and if there's one thing i love about this journey is the fact that i understand that part now the game itself i can't say i enjoyed it and i think there's a lot of reasons for that first of all it's a depressing game and i tend to be very sensitive to depressing theme games like even even tv shows um i don't watch horror and i don't watch um anything like with zombies or anything like that, because it's overall a depressing theme for the most part. And that tends to impact me. And despite, you know, I don't necessarily suffer from depression, um, it does lower my mood morale. And I just feel less optimistic and alive in my actual life when I experience, consume too much of that negative content. Now, some people are able to like consume that and not have that reaction or they love it or it, like elevates, like, you know, it's just a different experience for them. Um, so there's that that's, you know, how that affects me. There's also the fact that this is an older game. Uh, so I think viewing it through 2021, I am probably a lot more critical and less accepting of some of the clunkiness of this game. So there's that. And then talking through with Ruricon, I noticed, uh, I realized the game seems to really shine for people who love to experiment. And, you know, Ruricon was his first thought after he beat it. He was saying, well, what happens if I like do this build or what happens if I get this first? And he, like, it's all about kind of replaying and trying different things. And as a player, I know I hate experimenting. I'm the type of player who wants to get everything, experience the game and just move on, which is why uh, any game that has like heavy customization or experimentation tends to put me off for the most part. So for me, what I'm looking for is that first time experience. And in Dark Souls, that first time, I don't think the first experience is the best experience for Dark Souls because you're lacking the knowledge. You're just getting punished everywhere you go. You don't know what's going on. And it's only after that you've completed everything that you now have this kind of insight into the game and the world. You can go back and you can appreciate it on a different level. And Rurikon kind of mentioned this. And he says, I should revisit this game maybe six months from now go back in with a fresh mindset and I, since I will know where to go and what to do and who's what and what's going on, I'll be a lot more uh, informed about the world and I totally agree with them and I, I am personally curious to revisit the game, not replay it, but revisit it to see what it's all about. Um, but overall, uh, yeah, it's a game that didn't click for me. I was really hoping to get the same experience uh, Monster Hunter gave me and a lot of people were saying, you know, Dark Souls is kind of like a cousin to Monster Hunter in terms of like gameplay and community. And so I was really expecting, since I hated Monster Hunter and I loved it after, that Dark Souls would be another one that I would hate and fall in love with. But it's just not the case. The game never clicked with me. Um, there is more like negativity than positivity for me that I would not recommend this game necessarily unless like I would be like, oh, you like experimenting? You like depressing theme? You're okay with older mechanics? try Dark Souls. It's an experience that I think every gamer should be aware of, of what that pilgrimage is, just from like a concept standpoint of what a game can be. But if you don't want to play through that uh, and you don't hit those like three uh, items on the checklist, just avoid it and go play something happier because there's a lot of better games. Now with all of that in mind, uh, where do we go from here in the Soulsborne world? Because this is the first Soulsborne game I have completed. Uh, so I've heard Dark Souls 2 from the Dark Souls community is kind of the black sheep. And I've heard some people say good things about it and that doesn't deserve the hate that it gets. And I've heard from others that some of the mechanics I dislike are worse in Dark Souls 2. Um, so it's a little bit of a, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's a bit of a, uh, man, I can't get the word. Um. So Dark Souls 2 is a controversial game from what I hear. Uh, Dark Souls 3 is the one that has been recommended to me the most out of all the three Dark Souls. 
And people have said that is where you should come in as a newcomer. It's the most recent Dark Souls. It has a lot of fleshed out mechanics. It ties to the lore of the first game. So without pledging anything, we're going to go into the... I'm going to stream Dark Souls 3 the next time. We're going to play four hours of it. We're just going to see what that game's about, how it compares to Dark Souls 1. If I see that the experience has been elevated in any way, I'm going to keep playing. But if I feel that Dark Souls 3 is just more of Dark Souls 1 with like a little bit more polish on it, that's just not for me and it's going to be a no thank you and I'm going to move on from Dark Souls. With that in mind, in Soulsborne, everyone's been saying Bloodborne is where I should go and I'm also really curious about... Sek I'm not even curious about Sekiro. Sekiro I bought uh, and I, I didn't really understand the Soulsborne genre and it was just the difficulty kind of kept me locked out of the game and I never went back to it. So Sekiro is another game that is less about the experimentation of for, for Soulsborne. So I'm really curious about Bloodborne and Sekiro. So those two, if Dark Souls 3 does not do it for me, we're going to go to Bloodborne because I've heard every weapon in there is like a switch axe. So we're going to try that. And if Bloodborne doesn't click, I already have Sekiro. So I want to go back and I like the thematic, like the theme of Sekiro. And we're going to try that. And if that doesn't click, I am closing the door on Soulsborne games for for a long time, or maybe we'll try Elden Ring. I don't know, um, but that's that's the route we're gonna take, and we'll see where that leads us. So thank you everyone for joining me on my Dark Souls journey. I'm glad we got to experience it together. If you're a big fan of the franchise and I played it in a way that upset you, I mean I apologize, but also everyone's experience is different. And while mine was with a streaming audience. That is the way I'm happy to have experienced my first Dark Souls. It's not a game I would have wanted to play on my own. It would have been even more depressive, depressing for me. And I probably wouldn't have finished it if I was playing this by myself. So I'll see you in the next journal or on the next stream. And until next time, keep it classy.